Maybe miracles do exist. <laughs> <laughs> they do exist. Oh. Uh, Santa? Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up if you want. <laughs> Today we're diving back into r slash neckbeard stories. It is actually from the subreddit r slash neckbeard stories, but it was also published to my personal subreddit r slash red x reads, of course, although the one that I will be reading today is the one from r slash neckbeard stories, because, you know, it's got more upvotes. It's, it looks kind of better that way. <laughs> I guess, whatever. This is another story by user Little Ann Woods. Yes, indeed, our very own patron. She had a story about a game shop neckbeard that she published previously, and I will link that for you in the description if you haven't seen it yet. This is a three-part series from what I can tell. It might continue on beyond that, but um, if that's the case, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> I definitely hope that you guys will enjoy, so let's go ahead and get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way and get this video started as we dive right into some Neckbeard Stories cringe. A Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy, Chapter 1, Concerning Neckbeards. <laughs> I have talked about this one quite a bit, so I'm excited to hop into it. TLDR. Introduction to a neckbeard with 30 years of experience in inappropriate behavior. Ugh, an old hand. <laughs> Quite literally. I apologize in advance for the undoubtedly dozens of writing errors and spelling mistakes. English is not my first language. Also, I'm severely dyslexic. Please do not hesitate to criticize, though. How else am I going to learn? I know that it is a big post, and I am not apologizing for that. Because I like it. <laughs> so do I, OP. Don't apologize for any of that stuff. You're using punctuation and that's half the battle. <laughs> the cast. Me, that's OP. 24 at the beginning of this story. Grown out of my weeb phase. And a functioning, maybe, <laughs> working member of society. Lavender Beard, 61 or 62. Jeez, <laughs> at the beginning of this story. And he's been a thorn in my side for the last three years. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've been thinking about telling you guys the story of Lavender Beard for a while now. This man has many neckbeard qualities, but there's also a lot that he doesn't have. However, as Red X often says, it's the beard on the inside that counts. Yes, indeed. We even made t-shirts. <laughs> Check out Teespring. I will be making a series out of this. Given the fact that I have years of incidents and anecdotes to entertain you guys with, today is my last day at this job. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't have any work at the moment, and I finished all my open cases, so I don't really have anything better to do than entertain the wonderful readers of this subreddit. So let us start at the beginning. What was your job? <laughs> cases? That sounds like a pretty interesting job already. But I don't want to pry. Part 1. Concerning Neckbeards. Neckbeards have been living and creeping in the four farthings of the globe for many hundreds of years. Quite content to ignore and be ignored by the world of the normal folk. The normies, as they call them. <laughs> Earth being, after all, full of strange creatures beyond number. Neckbeards must seem of little importance, being neither renowned as great warriors, nor counted among the very wise. In fact, it has been remarked by some that the Neckbeard's only real passion is for porn. <laughs> a rather unfair observation, as they have also developed a keen interest in the denigration of others and the ignoring of boundaries. But where their hearts truly lie is in the wooing of miladies and well-shaped female beards. For it is true that all neckbeards share a love of things that jiggle. <laughs> and yes, no doubt to others their ways seem quaint, but today of all days, it is brought home to me. It is a bad thing to celebrate 
a neckbeard life. Now, I may not be a very smart man, but I'm pretty sure that's from The Hobbit or something. <laughs> that's beautiful. God damn. What a way to start it. <laughs> Our day begins three years ago in 2018. It was a special day. I'd been working in a little bookshop for about a year, making just minimum wage and barely scraping by. Today, however, that was going to change. I received a job offer from my local government office, and I, a young and enthusiastic 24-year-old, was ready for a new adventure. It was my first day. Yay! First day on the new job. It always feels great. And then after two months, you feel like your soul sucked out of your body. <laughs> I walked into the office and was put to work immediately to check the birth certificates of the last year for writing errors or missed signatures. It wasn't the most interesting of jobs, but they didn't have the time to train me yet. I started in January, and there was a lot of pressure to complete all of this book that I had by the end of the month. It was boring work, but I needed to concentrate, otherwise I would inevitably miss something. So there I was, sitting in the big back office on a tiny chair with about 20 books, all containing thousands of birth certificates. Leaning over each one of them, pencil in hand, sticky notes in the other in case I found an error. Then it hit me. Lavender. I love lavender. It's a wonderful, calming smell. I put a bag of fresh lavender in my closet to give my clothes some of that smell. However, this smell wasn't just overwhelming. It was artificial and just way too much. I looked up to find out where this nasal assault was coming from, and I looked up just in time to see a 60-year-old man plopping into the seat directly next to me and leaning in very closely, way too closely. He didn't just smell a little like lavender. No, he didn't even smell like he chugged an entire bottle of lavender perfume either. It smelled like he had slept in a cocoon <laughs> like in the Matrix, but the amniotic fluid just contained lavender. This man didn't smell of lavender. This man exuded lavender. <laughs> the smell was overwhelming and just vomit-inducing. I have to say, since I met this beardo, I have developed a disgust for it, which is sad because it used to be one of my favorite smells. I really don't know what's worse, a beard that smells like a garbage dump or a beard that actually smells somewhat decent, maybe, <laughs> but also ruins one of your favorite smells. It's interesting how close we tie smells to memories and stuff like that. This dude has probably ruined lavender for a lot of people. <laughs> lavender beard was a 60 plus year old man. He was pretty young looking for his age, and he also didn't have the circumference that one usually finds in a neck beard. <laughs> He's slim, about six feet tall, with white slash grayish hair and tiny eyes. Neither is he badly dressed. His beardiness is almost exclusively on the inside. He introduced himself as Lavender, obviously not his real name, and then he decided to tell me why he is the most amazing person I will ever meet. It was my first day, so I was very polite. He seemed just like a lonely old man that didn't have anyone else to talk to. I mean, not really to, but at. <laughs> he told me that he was a true artist, that he hated his job here and would love to do something else. When asked why he didn't just look for another job, <laughs> he shrugged and said something to the effect of, I wouldn't give the higher-ups the satisfaction. Okay, bro. Keep working a job you hate out of spite. <laughs> Doesn't seem like the smartest move. He gestured to his paintings around the office, telling me that you could clearly see how amazing his craftsmanship was. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of background information about myself. I have a bachelor's as a high school teacher. My specializations are the arts 
dance, and the visual arts, painting, sculpting, drawing, etc., music, and multimedia, I have learned to ooh and ah at the most terrible artwork. <laughs> However, I'm used to doing this to like 12 to 18 year olds, not grown men. Retirement age men at that. <laughs> His work was definitely uh, special. It's not that it looked like the doodles of a five-year-old, but I could probably compare them to about a five-minute sketch done by a middle schooler. You could tell what it was that he had drawn or painted, but that was about it. <laughs> Sounds like we got another art beard on our hands. I would love to see some of these drawings if it wouldn't dox him in any way. Is that possible? Can we do that? I'm gonna ask in the Discord. <laughs> Here, however, is where I made my first mistake. Not only did I indulge his never-ending word vomit, I told him about my degree. That instantaneously made us kindred spirits. I was a fellow creative. <laughs> oh, God. As he called himself. He continued talking to me about himself for the next two hours. Ugh. I couldn't continue my work, and he had even moved a lot of the books away from me so he could show me his latest satirical photoshopped picture. Yeah, not only was he a creative soul, he also saw himself as a freedom fighter against the big man up high. <laughs> God, uh, Photoshop is my weapon. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, of course... He had made the most satirical post that he could think of. Our boss and leading alderman's faces photoshopped onto babies. <laughs> ah, yes. The highest of satire. <laughs> See, he said, we're controlled by babies who can't even wipe their own butts. Yeah, Lavender. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> Clever. You are indeed a creative genius. <laughs> God. Uh, this is so funny. I know it's probably going to get creepier, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Lavender also told me during this meeting about his type 1 diabetes. He showed me a patch on his arm and the monitor that he always had in his pocket, which was attached to his groin, which told him at any time of the day how high or low his blood sugar was. And this is a little item that will come back into the story later. Now, tucking my ear off for what felt like a century, I was finally rescued by a colleague who told Lavender to go back to his seat and actually do some work for once. He did for all of five minutes. <laughs> then he got back up, went over to another co-worker, and started jabbing John again. Luckily, I was safe, at least for now. I learned very quickly that Lavender was not well liked. He had been working within government for over 30 years. They had bounced him from department to department. No one wanted him. <laughs> he wasn't only constantly disturbing his fellow colleagues, he was also majorly incompetent. He may have thought that he was the most intelligent being on the planet. But the little work that he did actually do had to be redone by someone else when Lavender was finished with it. <laughs> I also started hearing very disturbing rumors about him. Apparently, he wasn't just a lonely guy that wasn't very aware of personal space and what appropriate topics were. In fact, he knew exactly what he was doing. I mean, at 60 years old, I, I would hope so, but also that makes him a hell of a lot more cringy than just, like, a clueless high school beardo. You know what I mean? This is not good. Like I said, it, I think it's gonna get creepy. He liked testing to see how far he could go and what he could get away with, and he literally told this to me verbatim. According to some of my colleagues, he had been written up for more than one count of sexual harassment. It just never went anywhere. See, Lavender Beard had tenure. Ah, good old tenure. <laughs> Still does, by the way. In my country, it is very hard to fire a civil employee. It's even harder to fire a tenured civil employee, which is probably why they stopped giving people tenure. 
It was just simply too costly to fire him. So instead, they just shoved him from one department to the next until the complaints there got too big, and then they just ship him off to another one, and so on and so forth. <laughs> in the three years that I worked here, he has worked in three different departments, and presumably failed <laughs> at each and every one of them. Unfortunately, we did still share the same back office, given the fact that the other departments work closely with ours. I luckily never had the pleasure of working with him directly. Thank the heavens. Maybe miracles do exist. <laughs> Over the next two months, Lavender talked a lot about his art, him, his photographs of animals having sex. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, wind it back. What? <laughs> and then some more about him. And then also his monstrous ex-wife, who was the devil incarnate and left him for no reason. He cheated on her, I later learned from a co-worker. <laughs> uh, more about him, and also his diabetes, and, and also more about him. You get the gist. He'd also taken to telling me the reading of his diabetes monitor every day. <laughs> uh, he'd ask me, how are you? And I'd say, great, how are you? And he would tell me how high or low his blood sugar was. <laughs> Uh, he also started making comments, uncomfortable comments, about my body. Oh, here we go. At the time, I was a bit of a gym rat. I had a nice figure, but his comments went further than just, you look nice. They bordered on harassment, but they were never so bad that I felt that I actually had to report it. He never stopped doing this, by the way. I spent the last two years in a wheelchair. With this and COVID, I have gained quite a few kilos. I'm not overweight, but now that the COVID numbers are finally going down, and I'm slowly starting to walk again, I will be applying for a new gym membership soon, which she has talked about in my Discord, and I'm proud to take the gym journey with you. I'm also trying to make myself strong. <laughs> anyway, even when I was in my wheelchair, he'd still make comments. If I was talking to a coworker about the fact that I gained weight because of my wheelchair, he'd say things like, At least you fill in in all the right places. Or a little more sophisticated version of, I'd still do ya. <laughs> Which I find hard to translate into English. The comments never stopped, no matter how clear I made it that they were not welcome. Because he knows he can't get fired. Because he's tenured. Oh, what, what a mess, man. All this innocent yet uncomfortable and annoying behavior eventually came to its first climax in my third month here. It was the afternoon, and I was getting my stuff to go to the cafeteria. I was doing something. I don't remember what. But it took me a while. And when I looked up, Lavender and I were the only ones left in the back office. Uh-oh. He usually asked me how I was. He did this literally every time he saw me, multiple times a day. <laughs> I answered with my usual, I'm still fine, how are you? And he told me his blood sugar, and then he started walking towards me. See, now, I was looking in a closet in the corner of the room because that's where all my stuff was, and he was still talking about his diabetes and telling me about the monitor and the insulin pump that were directly inserted into his body. Keep in mind, I had never asked. <laughs> he eventually stopped walking when my nose was almost in his shirt. I froze. What in the hell was he doing? I couldn't respond and a nauseating fear started to creep through me. And then it got worse. Ugh. He started undoing his belt. Ugh. He told me his pump was inserted into his groin, and he wanted to show me. Oh my god! Oh, I fucking hate it! This six-foot-tall, 60-year-old man was cornering me. Panic raced through my head. I'm five feet tall, and I weigh almost nothing. And this man, this fucking neckbeard, was pulling his pants down while I could not run away. He opened up his belt and started to unzip his pants. Slowly pulling both his pants and his underwear down. Oh god, 
Yes, make it stop. And that's when I saw my salvation. Under Lavender's armpit, I saw Lavender's friend. Let's call him David. As much as anyone can be friends with this beard, pass by the hallway door. Oh, God bless you, David. <laughs> I've never been so happy to see anyone. Holy shit. I scraped up what little courage I could muster and cheerily yelled, Hey, David! You here to pick up lavender for lunch? <laughs> David stepped into the back office and lavender turned around, giving me a brief opportunity to squeeze right past him. Lavender was just standing there with his pants down <laughs> oh, God. And sheepishly said, I was showing OP my diabetes implant. David said nothing. Absolutely nothing. And they left together to eat, not even mentioning what had happened. Well, maybe David isn't as good a guy as I thought, but he did save your bacon, even if by accident. Holy shit, man. I told you it was going to get nasty. <laughs> Boy, did it. What I haven't mentioned is that David was looking into the back office when he walked by. He saw what was happening. And I think that if I had not addressed him directly, he would have just kept walking. Ugh. I don't know if this is just a generational thing of like, hear no evil, see no evil. But this isn't going to be the last time that one of these 60 plus year old co-workers acted like this or did the harassing themselves. I was still shaking and I just bolted to the office across the hall where I knew my direct supervisor was eating. I told him everything that had happened. He was shocked, <laughs> as I think all of us are, and he promised me that this would be handled. Well, I never heard about it again. Until last Friday. Me and my supervisor were having a farewell interview, and I brought up the incident. He told me that he took it to the higher-ups, called everyone together, even the person directly under the mayor. This woman, whom I came to despise, and was very happy to see her retire last year, had this to say to my supervisor. Women today have no backbone! She just needs to create some thicker skin! It's no big deal! See? What the hell is it with this generation? <laughs> they're the greatest generation. Nah, the greatest generation's like 90. I think they're the boomers, aren't they? Yeah, what the hell's wrong with them? <laughs> and that was it. Case closed. There was no file made. My complaint wasn't even registered. And Lavender, this fucking creep, totally got away with it. <sighs> this too will be a recurring theme throughout this series of beard tales. So this was, for me, the biggest incident with Lavender. It was far from the last, but it was the only time that he truly frightened me. I will, however, continue this expose of cringe, because I will not only regale you with songs of my own woes, but also those of my co-workers. For in fact, this beard preyed upon all that had not yet come to be 40. So... Until the next chapter. Holy balls and a half, man. Coming out of the gate swinging. You want to get me hooked into a, a saga of beard stories? Come out of the gate swinging like this. This is some heavy cringe. At first, I thought maybe he was just a doofy beard, but you described that he knew exactly what he was doing. And yes, he showed that he knew exactly what he was doing. Totally ready to take advantage of a young girl in the back office under the guise of diabetes. At least he's not using autism as a shield. <laughs> but he is using diabetes as a shield. Jesus Christ, dude. And the fact that everybody knows and just kind of lets him get away with it. I mean, I'm already skeptical of people who work in government. Particularly politicians. But it's starting to seem more and more to me like... Any government building that you walk into is just a swirling portal to hell. <laughs> Demons walk the halls, man. This is absolutely wild. Couple more parts of Lavender Beard to go, and I am going to get into them. This part kind of scarred me, man. Started out with like, haha, he sucks at painting, and ended with like, oh my god, why is he taking his pants off? <laughs> what the fuck? OP does say that this is the worst of the incidents, but... Ooh, gave me both barrels right out of the gate. 
I have a pen knife in my desk. We can do this right now. <laughs> I'll flat out castrate you. A Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy. Chapter 2. The Two Bastards. <laughs> oh boy, he's got a, a teammate, I suppose. TLDR, Lavender asks about my parents' genitalia <laughs> and sex life. Oh no. Ancient Beard exposes himself as the creep that he is, as if he didn't do that last episode. And the bearded bosses do what they do best. Nothing at all. It's <laughs> about par for the course as far as bosses go, I do think. Welcome back, dear reader. Today, I will once again regale you with stories from my workplace and the lavender-scented asshat that inhabited it. Today, I will be taking you further into the den of inappropriate insensitivity. Once again, sorry for any spelling mistakes and phrasing errors. English is not my first language. Please don't hesitate to give me pointers. How else am I gonna learn? Seems like you got a pretty good grasp on things. I do change some words up and stuff just to make it uh, easier to say and understand. So those are my pointers. <laughs> and we've got the cast. Me, that's OP. Between 24 and 26 when these stories took place. Tiny woman. I'm not the prettiest of women, but I do attract a lot of neckbeards. I'm a very young looking person, and I can look anywhere from 5 to 10 years younger. <laughs> I thought you were going to say 5 years old. I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, blue eyes, ever changing hair colors, and a wardrobe that goes anywhere from professional chic to, hey, look, that girl's a giant nerd. Better than my wardrobe, honestly, where people go, God, it looks like he really does not care. <laughs> Doesn't he have a job? No, dude. I'm a YouTuber. I live in my underwear, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Lavender Beard is the main antagonist of these stories. A long, thin, crooked man with graying hair and teeny, tiny eyes. Not able to talk at a normal decibel level. He can be heard from like a kilometer away. Always accompanied by his trusty diabetes pump. <laughs> which he likes to shove into people's faces for no reason. He smells like he fell into a cauldron of lavender as a child, and he leaves a trail of artificial lavender scent everywhere he stomps, even the girl's bathroom. Hey, get that beard out of the girl's bathroom! <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to be in there. Ancient Beard, the oldest of the neckbeards at my job, likes to tell people about how many celebrities he's managed. When looked up, you can't find anything, so yeah, that's all probably a lie. <laughs> he only works on his side business instead of doing his job. I don't think I ever saw him do any actual work. He always handed his year-long backlog over to the interns. Hey, what are interns for? <laughs> only worked one more year after I arrived, thank goodness, and then he retired. He likes to talk about all the women he banged when he was younger. Yeah, that's probably a lie too. <laughs> Ancient Beard looked about 20 years older than he actually was. He looked a bit like a shriveled prune. He had almost no hair left, but combed what remained over his gigantic bald spot. <laughs> Leg Bitch, briefly mentioned in the previous story, worked directly under the... In the previous story, I called it an alderman, but I'm not sure if that's the correct translation. According to Wikipedia, it may be roughly translated as alderman or counselor or magistrate. Let's just call her the big boss. Looks like a total Karen. Even has the Karen haircut. I end up being unable to call the manager since she kind of is the manager and is absolutely horrible at her job. Can a Karen also be a leg beard? <laughs> My god, they're multiclassing. <laughs> there was just a permanent smile plastered on her face whenever you spoke to her, but it never reached her eyes. It was the fakest smile I have ever seen. And every time she did this, I just got so angry. <laughs> I don't know why this particular quirk pisses me off so much, but it just looked so condescending. I wanted to punch it right off of her stupid face. <laughs> you should have done it. It probably was condescending. Extremely insincere. Total Karen move to just act nice. Until the point that they don't get what they want. 
and then they switch it into bitch mode. It was always very clear through her constant nodding, yeses, and uh uh-huh, while you were still speaking, that she fucking couldn't care less. You knew even before you were done talking that nothing you said would make any difference because she wasn't actually listening. (laughs) Oh man, we got a lot of cast today. Stinky beard! (laughs) Leg bitch's direct subordinate and the boss above my supervisor. Sorry if this is getting confusing. (laughs) I'm still hanging in there. It's a big cast list, but it's good to have some background. Stinky Beard was actually a pretty nice dude most of the time. He was, however, the stinkiest, homeless-looking rich man that I've ever encountered. (laughs) Stinky Beard was extremely thin, almost 65 years old, and had a smell to him that clung to anything that he touched or if he stood in the vicinity for too long, it would linger. It was like the scent equivalent of the slime that a snail trails behind it. (laughs) You just couldn't get it off or shake it. He smelled like a turd (laughs) that had been baking in a closed hot car in the summer, sprinkled with dust and mothballs and iron. (laughs) Whoa! That's really painting a picture, OP. (laughs) Thank you for that. (laughs) I had coworkers literally throw pens away after he used them or go get a new desk chair from another room because he sat in theirs for a second and the smell just did not go away. Like Ancient Beard, this man also had a comb over, but where Ancient Beard's hair gave him at least a little bit of an illusion of hair, Stinky Beard's hair totaled like a whopping 20 hairs at the most. (laughs) At this point, just shave it, dude. Throw in the towel. (laughs) It's over. Somehow he managed to make these hairs that look like whiskers on a naked mole rat look so greasy. I think he might have dipped his hair in butter every morning. (laughs) The fact that crusty brown and yellow flakes attached themselves to the little pubes on his head did not help in the least. Oh, God. How could you have dandruff with only 20 hairs? (laughs) Something is severely wrong. And I like how OP's like, yeah, he's a nice guy most of the time, but he's a disgusting troll. (laughs) If he's really that nice, we don't need to come at him so hard, but I guess I'll judge him during the story. This man with an exorbitant salary that lived in a villa and drove BMWs, yes, plural, BMWs, (laughs) came to work in just gray jeans. And I'm pretty sure that it was always the same pair, with brown and white slash gray smudges all over it and holes in the bottoms. Shoes that had more holes in them than his brown and black teeth did. Ugh! (laughs) A dress shirt that might have been blue at one point, And it probably looked great when he bought it on his first work day in, like, fucking 1970. (laughs) And a diarrhea-colored cardigan. (laughs) His response to being challenged was just screaming at you at the top of his lungs. If you had the balls to just scream back, though, he came to respect you. Weird man. I ended up liking him from a safe distance. (laughs) Holy fuck, OP. You like this person? You gave it to him with both barrels. Oh, I'd hate to see what you actually have to say about me. (laughs) OP pulling no punches, man. Holy hell. Let me just once again state that all these beards were the same age. All of them seemed to think that the other's behavior was just fine. There seemed to be some serious generational communication issues here. What literally all of us saw as sexual harassment, inappropriate behavior, and even blatant racism, they just seemed to think was completely normal. (laughs) We 20 to 40 year olds were just, they're not used to anything. (laughs) God. Uh, Okay, boomer. (laughs) Part two, the two bastards. All right, getting into the meat of the story. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Reddit. The ones that didn't always matter, full of cringe and creeps they were. And sometimes, you didn't want to know the end, because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much 
disgust had just happened. But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this neck beard. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out clearer. Neckbeards cannot survive the light. Those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Reddit, I do understand. I know now. OPs in those stories had lots of chances of not posting their stories, only they did. They kept going because they were holding on to something. That there's some good cringe in this world, Mr. Reddit, and that it's worth fighting for. Oh, Sam! <laughs> you know Sam posts on Reddit. I definitely love the Lord of the Rings injections that we get at the beginning of each story. Absolutely beautiful. Anyways, our story continues where we left off last. I had reported Lavender Beard's behavior to my supervisor, who addressed this to Leg Bitch and Stink Beard. Both of them didn't think what Lavender did warranted any repercussions and just kind of swept it under the rug. From HR, I got the following statement. As long as he didn't touch you, there's nothing we can do. And that was that. Yeah, bro, you could pull your dick out in this office, just don't touch anybody with it. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, you might want to get in front of the ball on this one, HR. Jesus. I know now that that is total and utter bullshit, but I had just started. I hadn't worked very long, and most of my older coworkers, most of my coworkers were between 40 and 60, told me that uh, that was just lavender and not to worry about it. So I dropped it. Oops, should have talked to a lawyer. <laughs> I did, however, become a lot less friendly towards him. When he came to sit next to me, I just put on my headphones. When that didn't work and he started waving his hand two centimeters from my goddamn face, I told him to go bother someone else and to leave me alone. When he got so loud talking at all the other people that I could hear him over my headphones, I was known to yell at him to shut up and do some work for a change. I very quickly discovered that this was the only way to get him to shut up for at least a half an hour. Yeah, 16 times a day? All right, I can do that. <laughs> of course, if he had just behaved himself after this, I probably wouldn't be writing this epic tale of bearded sorrow. So let me tell you about the time that he heard my biological father was trans. Oh, no. I'm sure he's going to have some fantastic insights there. <laughs> I always wanted to hear a 60-year-old's thoughts on trans people. Oh, boy. My department deals, among other things, with the registration of a new gender. So if someone wants to officially change their gender, they come to us. Now in my department, it was very quickly known that I had two moms and that one of them was my biological father. They split up around the time that I was 17, but they still got along amazingly well and were still best friends. For this story, I will address her as Lily. So Lily had underwent an entire sex change. This too was known, our laws were pretty horrible at the time, and you could only change your gender officially if you were infertile, so that they couldn't reproduce. Yikes. Well, tough tits, <laughs> I'm still here, and now you can change your gender without this ridiculous requirement. We fought hard for that one, so booyah! <laughs> Honestly, pretty ridiculous that it had to be a fight at all, like... Who gives a shit what people want to consider themselves, you know? If it makes you happy, you do you, boo-boo. No skin off my nose. So, one day, one of the co-workers from the Department of Marriage came to me concerning the laws stated above and how this would affect their certificates. They knew that I knew a lot about this subject, so it was a perfectly fine thing to ask. Lavender, however, had been eavesdropping from his desk in the corner and practically sprinted over to us to start asking questions. Lavender, hey, your dad had a sex change? OP, yes, she's a woman now. Lavender, so, so does he have a vagina now? <laughs> OP, she had an operation, yes. Lavender, how does that work? Like, how do you turn your wiener into a hoo-ha? <laughs> uh, why, are you interested? 
I have a pen knife in my desk. We can do this right now. <laughs> See, now this is a question that I don't really have a problem with because it just asks about the surgical aspect of it. It is pretty interesting, I think. So I explained in general how the process works, both male to female and female to male. The next questions, however, were not so scientifically oriented, Lavender. What does your dad's vagina look like? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, he was practically salivating. Coworker, Lavender, what the hell? What kind of question is that? OP, first of all, ew. And second of all, how the hell am I supposed to know that? Lavender shrugs. Are uh, your parents still together? OP, not anymore. No, they split up a few years back. They're still good friends, though, Lavender. But were they together when your dad had his surgery? OP is now getting seriously annoyed with his insistence on using a male pronoun. Yeah, they were. And it's she and her. Lavender, completely ignoring me. So what was sex like? <laughs> I wasn't in the room, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Does your dad have female orgasms? How often did they have sex? Do you have pictures? <laughs> God, you killed me. Uh, what? <laughs> Why would I have pictures? <laughs> I don't even have the words, man. My coworker and I were also just lost for words. I just gaped, mouth open at him for like a straight minute. Just stunned silence, while Lavender just prattled on. Who asks that? How? Why? No! <laughs> just no! <laughs> my coworker told him he was disgusting, and I just picked up my stuff and went to work in the office next door. I didn't speak to him at all for like a week straight. Not that that stopped him from talking to me, but at least he never asked about my mom's genitals again. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was no point in reporting this, but I did it anyways. And I got the same response from Leg Bitch as I did the time before. Ugh, that is a handful, dude. What is the thought process? I'm, I'm so lost. <laughs> what the hell? Around this time, I also got my first experience with Ancient Beard. I'd come to know him as a narcissistic old man that could really only talk about himself, did nothing at all, and somehow still got paid for it. I instantly did not like this man. He was rude to the civilians in the front office and made so many mistakes. He did, however, at least mostly keep to himself. Only talking to David, see the last story, and Lavender. Them old geezers gotta stick together, I guess. <laughs> Birds of a feather, as I always say. One day, Ancient Beard, a female co-worker of mine, and I all had front office duty together. It was nearing the end of our shift, and there were no other people around. My co-worker, let's just call her Lady, and I were talking about an actor or something like that. We were making a few jokes about him. Some were a bit racy, <laughs> but nothing really inappropriate. Suddenly, Ancient Beard pipes up from his desk. Ancient Beard? Yeah, well, OP, you get me really horny. <laughs> <laughs> Lady and I just turned around in shock. Did I really just hear that right? What? I asked. The venom was just dripping off of my face at this moment. Ancient Beard? Hey, it's not my fault. You shouldn't dress like that if you don't want that kind of reaction. <laughs> now, for the record, not that it matters, but this is what I was wearing. This was what was so incredibly provocative that it should elicit such a response. Shorts that came to just above the knees, with leggings under that, and a long sleeve blouse. Also, combat boots. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm such a tease. <laughs> I think he's into combat boots. At this point, I went off on him. I told him he was disgusting, that his response was inappropriate, and to apologize. I said a lot more, but I don't remember the complete phrasing. Ancient Beard responded with, I'm sorry you can't take a compliment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I told him that if that was his idea of a compliment, to just stick to silence instead. Then I once again went to Leg Bitch and Stinkbeard. They responded as you might have suspected by now. While both of them agreed that that was inappropriate, they just had this to say. He's from another generation. Just hold on a little longer. He's almost retired. It's just how he is. <laughs> The senility is creeping in. You gotta let him do whatever he wants. This was officially the last time that I reported anything to them, but it was far from the last encounter. I hope that you like this chapter. More will be coming. Once again, I'm not apologizing for the beefiness that is this post. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I will see you in the next chapter. The episode continues. Well, at the very least, it seems like you're getting more comfortable at the job and not hesitating to push back against these beardos. It really sucks that you had to take all this stuff to HR, and on top of that, HR just ended up doing nothing about it. I don't know how well the job pays or if you enjoyed it or anything like that. I guess on some level, you might have enjoyed the work to stick around and put up with all this bullshit surrounding you, but oh man, the Spanish Inquisition popping up to ask, all about your mom's genitals, like, <laughs> what the hell is that? That's probably the part that blew my mind the most, but Ancient Beard also calling out OP and saying that she makes him horny or something like that, like, was this ever an appropriate thing to do? I guess you could have gotten away with it back in the 60s and 70s, although my only frame of reference for that is a few episodes of Mad Men, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know how it was. I wasn't even bored at that point. But maybe some other folk in the comments can enlighten me. It doesn't seem like something that ever would have been appropriate, but I don't know. Times change. And definitely change for the better as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> OP should be able to wear combat boots and a long sleeve blouse to work without being uh, verbally assaulted. <laughs> Ugh. Absolutely ridiculous. I really do enjoy these posts. I'll be looking forward to parts 2.5 and 3 uh, sometime in the coming weeks. But I also want to thank Little Ann Woods for just being a lovely person, hanging out in the Discord, supporting on the Patreon. It really does feel great to have someone enjoying the channel that much. While in fact, he looks more like a baboon. <laughs> yes, you! Baboon, 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 baboon! A Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy. Side Stories. The Tales of Horror. Horror. <laughs> TLDR, Lavender hits on a former miss in the creepiest way possible, talks to another about the wanking habits of her 12-year-old son, and then follows yet another one home. God, where's he finding all these miss whatnots? I guess he works for the government. He has access to a lot of people that he uh, shouldn't have access to. <laughs> like anyone that exists on the planet. Can we just lock him up? Put him against the wall? Okay, well, I, we're not even into the story and I'm already frothing, so... <laughs> I'm gonna dial it back and, and let's see what we got here. Hello again, my dear readers. Today I have some delicious stories for you all. I will be focusing on events that didn't happen to me, but to my colleagues. Okay, that's why it's a side story, but it's still about this beard, right? You didn't think I was the only one to be creeped on, did you? All these things happened while I was working there. I was only physically present for one of these instances, but <laughs> I have no doubts about their authenticity. He was just that much of a creep. Some of the details have been changed as to protect the non-bearded. The cast, OP, between 24 and 26 when these stories took place. Tiny Grill likes roasting. <laughs> yeah, roast that beard. Just make sure you roast them far away from the house, or you'll never get the smell out. <laughs> Neckbeard Bait graduated from cringy weeb phase, and now a contributing, albeit openly geeky, member of society. See-through skin, 
ever-changing hair color, bright blue eyes, never been called beautiful, but I am apparently adorably cute. I got called a fairy today. <laughs> I don't know why I'm sharing this, but it made me happy. Yeah, fairy, I dig it. Nice for girls, uh, very not nice for guys. <laughs> Miss Beauty, beautiful colleague, way out of Lavender Beard's league, former Miss contestant, she came in second, has a husband and a child, by the way, one of the prettiest women that I have ever met, soft-spoken, very introverted, and conservatively dressed, Susan, strong, no-nonsense colleague, who doesn't take any crap from Lavender Beard, looks like a beautiful brown-haired Viking, like if you put an axe in her hand, she would have cut Lavender Beard in two. <laughs> but she also looks like she stepped out of a fashion catalog, has a 12-year-old son, in her 30s, but she still looks 20 though. Honestly, these two make me feel like a fat little goblin. <laughs> Ah, oh, don't slam yourself, OP. There's only one real goblin in this story. A slender elf princess and a tall, graceful warrior. Queens, in their own right. And again, they do not take shit from anyone. Vanessa, not a direct colleague, but her story was told to me when we were compiling a complaint file. Probably had the worst experience with Lavender Beard to date. I still think she should have gone to the police. Uh-oh. 30-plus-year-old lady, slightly broader woman with a dazzling smile, always upbeat and way too nice for her own good. And of course, we've got the beard. Lavender beard. The incompetent, creepy stink weasel <laughs> that horrifies us all and annoys all that cross his path. Six feet tall, 60-plus years old, thin gray ass hat with eyes that don't seem to go past the halfway point. Teeny, tiny, puny peepers <laughs> that leer over any unsuspecting woman that is unfortunate enough to cross his path, struts around the office like he's king of the jungle, while in fact he looks more like a baboon, <laughs> shoving his engorged ass in anyone and everyone's face, whether they had asked for it or not. Nobody asked for that, come on. <laughs> His diabetes pump being the enlarged buttocks, for those wondering. When he was but a little weasel, he was undoubtedly bitten by a radioactive lavender plant. <laughs> Forever gaining the power of the lavender cloud. Wherever he walks, the cloud follows. It lingers anywhere he goes as a purple wave. It washes over the unsuspected and removes all love for that once so relaxing smell. <laughs> that description is so A+. Plus. God, you're getting better and better, OP. Leg bitch. Horrible boss lady that thinks women who complain about sexual harassment are just overreacting. They should learn to keep their mouth shut and act like real ladies. Short, fat, blonde ogre with a Karen haircut. <laughs> 60 plus years old. Has a smile that wouldn't even fool a blind man. Eyes that have died about the same time that her sense of humor did. <laughs> uh, asks, how are you? And answers with, that's nice, before you even have time to respond. Generally just a despicable human being. I honestly, really do not like this woman. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of this story, neither will you. Considering the previous parts, I'm already quite biased against her. <laughs> She's covering up the horrors that Lavender Beard has committed. Anyways, on to the story. Side stories. The tales of horror. Uh-oh, I'm gonna butcher this. <laughs> het cantor verander. The office has changed. Que vol het an me water. I feel it in my bones. Que cant volt an min clientin. I feel it in my little toe. Que cant reaken an de lucht. I smell it in the air. Much that once was safe is lost. For none now work here who remember it. It all began with the hiring of the great beards. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, this Lord of the Rings thing. God, it's the best way to start the story. Uh, another reason I'm so hooked into the Lavender series. Three were given to the bosses. Immoral least wise, and the most fragile of all beings. <laughs> Seven victims given to the administrators, 
great workers and employees of the government halls, and nine complaints were filed to the men of resource, who above all else desire to do nothing. <laughs> For within these complaints was bound the strength and the will to expel the neckbeard from their mists, but they were all beards, deceived, for another mistake was made, deep in the office of marriage, in the fires of Mount Bloom, the dark Lord Lavender forged a purple cloud of tenure, <laughs> and into this tenure he poured all his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One beard to scare them all, one beard to find them. One beard to bring them all, and in the trauma, bind them. <laughs> uh, oh, so beautiful. Part one. Hast thou washed thine cooch? <laughs> I'm dying already. It's so good. This story was told me about ten minutes after it happened. Miss B was still seething with anger as I came down from the front office for my break. A little context. Halfway through my first year, our back office moved because the floor had to be renovated. The supervisors had taken this opportunity to expel Lavender from the back office and put him into a separate room that also doubled as the lunchroom. <laughs> they got away with this under the nose of Leg Bitch, under the mum of giving him the job of answering calls, playing call center for an office that, uh... Didn't really need one. <laughs> yes, they literally created a job for him just so he wouldn't constantly bother others or screw up important files and cases. It worked a little. <laughs> well, there was no supervisor in the back office. He'd just come in anyways. And of course, today was such a day. I came in and I heard Miss B yelling to Susan, I want him gone. Why won't they do anything? I'm so done. I'm calling my husband, and he's going to beat his ass. Susan tried to calm her down, telling her that might not be the best solution, and it would only end up with her husband in jail. I still kind of wish that he had done that, though. <laughs> I came up to them and asked, what happened? What do you think, asked Susan. I didn't have to ask and just said, well, what did he say? <laughs> he, yes. Miss B was almost shaking. She was so angry, I thought she might throw her laptop into Lavender's general direction. He wasn't there anymore when I entered, but by the smell of things, he had been, not too long ago. <laughs> Miss B took a deep breath, trying to calm herself, and began. <sighs> he sat down next to me, and I got nauseous from the smell. At first, I just told him to go away, but he ignored me and just kept talking about his photography. She air-quoted that last part. Lavender Beard's photography was usually just a collection of insects, birds, and other critters that he found mating. <laughs> the pictures were very well done, but, you know, the subject was animals humping. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, oh, he's such a weird guy. How does one beard exist this long and still stay so weird? Ugh. He was just smelling really bad today, and it was so overwhelming. The lavender is just everywhere. Miss B made a disgusted face, stared at the seat that was close to her, probably where Lavender Beard had sat down, and she gave it a kick. The chair cheerily rolled away, blissfully unaware of the flower goblin that had been using it. <laughs> I just couldn't take it, so I told him his perfume was too much and that he should really tone it down. Yeah, because no one ever told him that, Susan smirked sarcastically. After a glare from Miss B, she shut up though. She was in a really bad mood. I don't think any of us had ever seen Miss B this mad before. Lavender had just laughed at her comment told her that his scented oils weren't that bad, and that he smelled great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one opinion, I guess. Then he went over a subject that he really wanted to discuss. He leaned over to me, way too close, and he asked me, How often do you wash between your legs? 
Miss B's voice got louder as she went on. He said a woman should smell nice between her legs. His ex didn't wash herself enough down there, and he wanted to know if I smelled good because he likes a woman whose cooch smells nice. <laughs> it's really not funny. It's fucking horrifying. But <laughs> the audacity of this. <laughs> I gotta laugh or I'm gonna go crazy. She was screaming at this point, and me and Susan had to calm her down. We tried to remind her that this was an office, and that leg bitch was only two doors down. She usually ate in her office, but the damage was done. Leg bitch walked into the back office, looking to find where all this commotion was coming from. What's all this racket? She said with her smile not smile. <laughs> this is an office, Miss B. I didn't expect this from you. <sighs> Act like a lady. Miss B still pissed the hell off. Did not back down, though. She began the story again, a little quieter, though, <laughs> after she came to the I like a good smell and cooch part. She added this little gem. He then told me he washes himself every day, you know, down there, and that he uses essential oils on his privates as well. A pause fell, and then she exclaimed, And then he winked at me! <laughs> God, leg bitch, I want him gone. Susan and I tried to agree and add to the horrors that we had to endure at the behest of this troll, but she shushed us with a literal shush. Shh. And still deadly smiling said, Girls, behave. This is no way for ladies such as yourself to act. Miss B, I expect you to keep your tone to a normal decibel level in the future, and I will hear no more of this. I expected better from you three. Then she left. It took everything I had not to go and fucking strangle her. <laughs> After we got over the initial shock and had ranted enough about the umbrage double that ruled our tiny kingdom, I turned back to Miss B. So, what did you say to him? Miss B, I screamed at him. I told him I would send my husband after him if he ever talked to me again and to get the hell away from me. She grinned a little. I might have threatened to stab him with my pen, too. <laughs> <laughs> She seemed to cheer up a bit about the idea of stabbing Lavender repeatedly with her tiny weapon, and it cheered me up too, honestly. <laughs> After her outburst, Lavender had apparently gotten up and walked away, talking about the sensitive women, and that she was obviously on her period. The fact that Miss B did not stab him is astounding to me. This woman has patience. <laughs> Poor Miss B. Maybe the verbal evisceration should have been a little bit more, but my god, where does this guy get off? Like, I like a woman who washes her coos? Well, you don't gotta worry about it, bro. You ain't never gonna get that close. Jesus. She should have stabbed him for real. <laughs> and we'll get into story two. Has thine offspring burped his worm yet? <laughs> what? <laughs> burped his worm. Oh, it's a masturbation euphemism. <laughs> I thought about burping like a giant wormy baby or something. That's a little more innocent than the reality. <laughs> this instance happened only a few weeks after the previous one. It's also the reason why Lavender is now slightly terrified of Susan. See, where Miss B can get angry, Susan can go full berserker. Lavender maybe thought he would get away with his antics with what in his eyes was uh, just a woman on her period, like he did with Miss B. But Susan is every bit the shield maiden that she looks to be, and this scented ball of snot <laughs> was smart enough to bring her child into this. Yep, them's killing words, not just fighting words. Just like in part one, I just came from the front office to the floor where our back office was to eat my lunch. The elevator hadn't even opened enough for me to get out yet when I heard the thunderous, raging screams. How dare you! You disgusting piece of shit! You vile little man! Susan's voice carried all the way down the hall. I hurried over as I heard her telling the beard off in every way that she could. 
You stay away from me, you hear? If you ever mention my son again, I will break every fucking bone in your pathetic little body. I halted at the door just long enough to see Susan almost hit Lavender. Her hand whooshed past his face. She obviously had intended to hit him, but had been able to restrain herself at the very last second. Lavender cowered back. He may be tall and even a scary man in my eyes, but Susan was well over six feet and had the perfect combination of muscles and curves. A Scandinavian Amazon, if you will. She towered over him, making him look like the small little rodent that he was inside. <laughs> and all her rage was directed at this ever-slinking, wilting lavender ball. Ah, oh, if looks could kill. He would still be writhing on the floor to this day, because those eyes were not just angry. They were filled with rage and unbridled hatred. He would not get an easy death. <laughs> not this stinkweed that had dared talk about her son. Do not speak to me. Do not talk to me. Get out of this office. You aren't even allowed in here. Get out before I remove you via the other exit. And she pointed at the window. <laughs> Lavender, idiot that he is, thought to use the same tactics that he had used for Miss B, and wanted to get the last word in while he walked to the door. Me, realizing that he was coming straight at me, quickly jumped inside the office, walked to a nearby desk, and planted myself on top of it, just sitting back to enjoy the show. Ah, <laughs> uh, you women are so easily offended. What are you on, your period or something? This was a mistake. <laughs> a very delicious mistake. Susan, who had deflated a little when he started to walk to the door, now swelled up again. She practically stormed at him and halted two centimeters from his face. See how he liked it. She blocked his path and whispered, What did you say to me? She was menacingly terrifying. <laughs> Uh, man, Susan's cool. She don't take no shit for realsy reels. Lavender, who had just been red from anger, now turned pale white with fear. He started stuttering, falling over his words and stumbling backwards. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to. I mean, that's not... It's just... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Susan took a step to the side, still eyeing him intently, and let him scramble back to his cave. <laughs> to his credit, or maybe on orders of one of the supervisors, he did apologize to Susan, but she never talked to him again unless it was absolutely necessary. Lavender, on his end, started groveling to Susan any chance that he got, trying to get back into her good graces. And of course, he never did, as he shouldn't. <laughs> Talk about my kid... That's a death warrant. Susan has a very specific set of skills. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> I let Susan calm down a bit first, before I finally asked her what the hell had happened. Lavender had flat out walked up to her while she was talking to some co-workers about their kids, and while showing them a picture of her son. How old is your son? Twelve, Susan said. Uh, and does he masturbate yet? <laughs> oh, God damn it. Why? What? Oh, God damn, dude. I don't know what to do with this guy. That has some terrifying undertones to it, okay? And thankfully, everybody else in this office was just as horrified as I am because the entire conversation ended. In fact, every conversation in the back office abruptly ended. Excuse me? Susan asked. Maybe she misunderstood. You know, has he janked off yet? Fuck. <laughs> he does not know when to stop. Lavender then proceeded to tell a too shocked to respond Susan about his first time. Yes, all about the first time that Lavender Beard had tugged his noodle. At the age of eight, apparently. That was information that we all could have done without. And now you guys are all included in this waking nightmare. But of course, Lavender Beard did not just end it there. See, Lavender has two sons. 
They're all grown up now, and I cannot imagine the youth that these two poor children must have endured, especially after this story, because he not only told Susan about his own first experience, he told her about both of his son's first experiences too. I don't know how he knew this, I'm pretty sure I don't want to know, but it is horrifying to think about. Oh, god damn. Are those kids okay? Are they functional members of society? You can have them hit me up, I'll foot the bill for the therapy, alright? This is about the part where Susan regained her ability to respond and exploded. And I made my way downstairs just in time to see shit hit the fan. Jesus, dude, Lavender might have a darker side than any of us know about. Like, he's already a really creepy and horrible person, but kids, man, leave them fucking kids alone, especially his own kids. I I can't I can't even think about that too much. I'm just going to fucking rage quit on the video. So we'll just push on into part three and hopefully uh, I can get over that. I know where thine abode resides. Oh, great. (laughs) This story is a little bit different than the other two because I wasn't there at all. Vanessa just told this to me when I and some co-workers started compiling a file on Lavender Beard. All of our grievances together in one big complaint. And we all read each other's stories. The two written above here and my previous Lavender stories were among them. And this is how I came to read Vanessa's story. Can we get a copy of that complaint file? Can we, like, (laughs) have endless Lavender Beard stories? I mean, I'm horrified, but again, I'm really fascinated, too. Anyways, we were all sitting at a table in the conference room. There were seven of us in total. Vanessa's, honestly, was the scariest one for me. It wasn't very long, but it showed me just how scary Lavender Beard could get. See, Lavender Beard had asked Vanessa, "Uh, Where in our city she lived? She, of course, stayed vague and just gave the general area. He'd been visiting her a lot and obviously fancied her. She, just like Miss B, was married. So one day she was talking with a friend at work about her street, and she happened to mention the name. This is when she noticed Lavender jolt past the door of her office. Ah, shit. (laughs) She wasn't sure if he had heard her, but that evening while she was cooking, she looked through her window. Oh no, dude. Goosebumps. A window that looked out onto the street and saw him. Oh my god, dude. This is terrifying. He was walking from house to house, peering through windows, looking for Vanessa. She quickly ducked down and called her husband. She told us at the table that she literally hid behind her husband until Lavender Beard had passed by. What the fuck, dude? That is so terrifying. The day after this incident, he casually told her that he had passed by her street, but hadn't seen her. Where did she live again? She told him that it was none of his business, but never told him that she had seen him. She was terrified, and rightly so. She also didn't report it. Nothing really happened, so there was nothing to report, right? Right? (laughs) All of us compiled our complaints and handed it to a supervisor who wanted him gone just as much as we did. She, in turn, gave it to Leg Bitch. We never heard about it again. But here is where my disdain for this wrinkled blonde toad really sets in. Leg Bitch retired a few months after this. This witch, this Cheshire cat wannabe, did one last despicable act before she left. She erased Lavender's complaint file. Oh, God. Why does she keep protecting him? I don't understand. Are they banging on the side? That's my working theory at the moment. I learned this on my last day at the office last week. Every complaint over the last 30 years about Lavender have just disappeared. They vanished into thin air. So we'll never get more stories <laughs> from that file. I mean, that's not the part that I should be the saddest about, but maybe she was trying to, like, cover her tracks or something like that because she had covered for Lavender Beard so much that as soon as another supervisor gets hired on or whatever, they're going to look at that file and be like, what the hell? 
This dude should have been fired like 20 times at least. And that speaks to her own incompetence. God, there are just so many questions that I have. I don't understand at all. The vile goblin of a woman had decided to throw out not only our horrendous experiences with Lavender out of the window, but every complaint about him ever. I got told this by the new boss, who I sent my official complaint letter about Lavender to. She was shocked about what she read, and horrified and angry that Legbitch never did anything with these complaints. Well, the truth always comes out, I suppose, but yeah, just a little bit too late in this case. However, given the fact that most of these are from before the pandemic, they aren't relevant anymore. Yes, they are. <laughs> and can't be used to fire him. She now has to wait for him to harass another woman before anything can be done. Ugh, so exhausting. Bureaucracy in action. The poor next victim. I'm sure there will be one. Lavender Beard just can't seem to help himself. Anyways, thank you everyone for reading. I know it's a very long post. Once again, I do not apologize for it. <laughs> also, English is not my first language. If you find any errors or phrasing mistakes, please don't hesitate to correct me. After all, how else am I going to learn? I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next post. Oh man, this is so not a normal work environment. This is so toxic and so horrible, and it's all being covered up. Because the big boss knows that if any of this came out, then there would be a lawsuit. And I know Americans get a rap for being, like, pretty lawsuit happy, but <laughs> I think anybody with eyes can see that this is beyond the fucking pale, isn't it? He asks OP, do you have pictures of your parents banging? Asks Miss B if she washes her coos. Asks Susan if she, her 12-year-old son has polished the bishop. Like, what is going on here? And I do agree that the cherry on top of this horrible, terrible, creepy Sunday is Lavender walking down this woman's street after he heard it mentioned in passing and looking in people's fucking windows. Oh my god. What are the gun laws like in your country, OP? <laughs> <laughs> That's always my solution. Like I say, you don't even have to shoot it. Just wave it at him. He ain't gonna come back. That's for damn sure. And if uh, you can't get a gun, then, I don't know, taser, pepper spray, maybe a nice rubber police baton or something. <laughs> I'm definitely glad that Lavender Beard did not spot Vanessa before she spotted him and she was able to hide and all that because I cannot imagine... If he actually knew where she lived and how the story would devolve from and how that situation would affect the story. Probably horribly. Probably I don't even want to think about it. Jesus Christ. We got one more Lavender Beard story to go. I'll probably get it up within the next few days. I'm really hoping that he has some sort of repercussions at the end of all this because he does not deserve anything. <laughs> I was going to say deserve to be free or deserve to be happy or we'll, we'll take it so far as to say deserve to be breathing. <laughs> I absolutely hate this man. And at 60 years old, you definitely know better. I think he just gets off on saying like the wildest shit to unsuspecting women. There's something seriously wrong inside of his brain. So Dr. Redex's suggestion, we have to ventilate his skull. Just like one or two holes about nine millimeters around. <laughs> <laughs> That'll fix it too. <laughs> God damn. It's horrible. It's cringy. But yeah, I can't get enough. For what a happy go lucky person I am, there's just some part of me that thrives on cringe. It's a very weird dichotomy. No disrespect to people with diabetes. That's kind of that diabetes. <laughs> a Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy. Chapter 3 The Return of the Cringe. <laughs> I just love the Lord of the Rings theme that you're going with, Little Ann Woods. Can we do this every time? <laughs> I don't wish more beards on you, but god damn, it's so tasty. Anyways, hi everyone. Sorry it's been a while. It hasn't though, because I posted it <laughs> months later, but you're good, you're good. My new job's got me quite busy. However, thank you to Red X for reading my short story of Game Shop Beard. Oh yeah! 
I do recall that one. I did a really nice thumbnail. I got to put anime eyes on Nosferatu, which is uh, <laughs> a lot of fun. It really motivated me to get back into writing the Lavender Beard Saga, and it was really awesome hearing you tell my story. You are hilarious and wonderful. Oh, don't give me a big head about it. Come on, you know. <laughs> I'm just over here doing what I do, living my best life. And I appreciate you guys for writing, because as I always say, there would be no channel without you guys uh, supporting it in the way that you do. As you guys may have noticed, I was basing my stories on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. However, we are only at my first year there, and there is so much more to tell you guys, even with the extra stories thrown in there, so I'll be adding some more stories. So if there are any ideas of books that I could use for my opening monologues, I'm open to suggestions. I could do The Hobbit, but I do like to change things up a little bit. Let me know. Okay, but we're still going to get a really, uh, <laughs> really nice Tolkien intro, aren't we? Aren't we? <laughs> now Red X said that the TLDR should come at the end, so that's what I'll do. I had no idea. I mean, you could put it wherever you want. I'm just being pedantic with the semantics. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something new every day. God, don't let me be your teacher. That's terrifying. <laughs> Normally, I would be apologizing for my spelling and phrasing errors, but I'm in a lot of pain at the moment, and I am aware that my painkillers have made my brain a little woozy. So please, bear with me. And that's it for me, so now on to the cast, and of course, the cringe. OP, between 25 and 27 when these stories took place, Teeny tiny girl, bright blue eyes, ever-changing hair, and a mouth on me that makes up for my height. <laughs> gotta compensate somehow, right? <laughs> uh, well, I'm six foot one and got a big mouth on me, so what am I compensating for? Wait, don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot more assertive compared to my high school years. I'm in a wheelchair for the remainder of my story. I will get to that a little further into the story itself. The pain made me a lot less tolerant of Lavender, not that he really noticed. <laughs> Lavender Beard. Once upon a time, a lonely Lavender farmer thought to make a son. <laughs> God damn it. He had no wife, and he wished for a child. One night, he went to the local witch and begged her to make him a son. She told him to pluck every lavender bush in existence <laughs> and bring it to her. It took him years. His hands were blistered and bleeding. He carried the scent everywhere he went, but eventually he did it. The witch took all the lavender that he had gathered, smushed it together and condensed it into a ball, and then she started to mold it into a golem. <laughs> uh, a creature that looked like a human, but wasn't. She took something out of a little wooden box and put a hole where his heart should be. The witch then told the farmer to take him home, and by morning, he would have a son. What the farmer didn't know was that this flowery golem's heart was filled to the brink with every vile thought and putrid idea that a person could have, and he was given no filter. So, when the curious farmer opened the box... The putrid feelings enveloped the golem. And so, Lavender Beard was born. <laughs> what a fucking backstory. Not quite a man with a smell that should please the senses, because that smell was poisoned by the disgusting, rotting intentions inside. Lavender is a thorn in my side. The most annoying man that I have ever met, and a creep in every sense of the word. He just seemed determined to creep out everyone in any possible way. He had an opinion on everything, and he thought that everyone should know, individually, one at a freaking time. <laughs> I thought she was going to take shots at me, OP. I got an opinion on everything, and I think everyone should know, but not individually. I just <laughs> make the video and kind of hope that people watch it. Even if you are all in the same office and have literally heard him prattle on with the same story to the people next to you three times over. He was a tall, slender-looking man. No literal neck beard, but a very huge, 
full bushy one on the inside. Check out that shirt at Teespring. <laughs> I truly despise this man. He uses his diabetes as an excuse and shoves his indicator, which is attached to his body, into your face to start a conversation. <laughs> Whether you're working, talking to citizens, or you're on your way to the bathroom, didn't matter to him. That's so awkward. Hey, look at my blood sugar level. Like, bitch, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about your existence. I definitely don't care about your blood sugar level. God. Susan. Oh, Susan's returning. That's wonderful. The beautiful, strong Viking warrior queen who more than once stood up for me against Lavender. She is a truly beautiful woman inside and out. Small update on this. Well, they haven't fired Lavender to this day. She told me last week they tried to fire her instead for being rude and aggressive to Lavender and talking back to the asshats in charge when, uh, they're being asshats. <laughs> Luckily, the syndicate stepped in, and eventually they all had to apologize to her. I was pissed that they tried to do this. Oh, so it's confirmed early that Lavender Beard is still lurking the halls of this government building. Susan deserves better. I hope she gets up and out, too. But anyways, with that bit of information stuck in my craw, <laughs> we'll get on to the story. Ah, writers of the internet, of Reddit, my brothers, I can see in your eyes the same fear that would take the heart of me. The day may come when the courage of men fails, but it is not this day. An hour of cringe and shattered egos, when the age of beards comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day, we write. <laughs> By all that you hold dear, I bid you stand, men of the world. And indeed, we are braving Helm's Deep today, <laughs> as we do most days. Halfway through my second year into this job, I had some major setbacks. But to get to that, we should probably start at the beginning. During my college years, my right shoulder started just popping out of its socket. Oof. I eventually had to get surgery on it, which in turn caused me to graduate a year later than I should have. I'm an art teacher, only in a theoretical sense, and it's kind of hard to teach art when you can't lift your arm. <laughs> I've always been a very active child, was usually enrolled in at least two or three after-school activities, judo, ballet, circus school, modern dance, Swimming, tango, Krav Maga, I had slash have a lot of energy. The one that sticks out to me is circus school. Bro, <laughs> can you teach me that? They teach you how to run up with a, a pail that looks like it's full of water and you throw it on somebody that's full of confetti? God! <laughs> that is a skill I need in my repertoire. After high school, I didn't have the time to sport as much as I did before. And my condition that I didn't even know existed started rearing its ugly head. See, I have a condition called GSHD, General Hypermobility Spectrum Disorder, which is pretty much the same thing as Ehlers-Danlos, for people who know what that means, but without the financial benefits. Ehlers-Danlos is a genetic condition, and you have to prove up to three generations back that people have had these issues. I couldn't do that because I lack grandparents, and thus I have to pay all my hospital bills out of pocket. Oof, are you get some of that government health care OP? I know you're not from the US, but I kind of just assume the rest of the world doesn't worry about hospital bills aside from like, you know, Asia. At least it seems like you're able to, to foot the bills, even if they are taxing you a bit on that. Very unfortunate. This condition causes my ligaments to be very loose. I have some cool party tricks. I can twist my head 120 degrees around. The cartilage in my ears is loose, so I can keep cracking it. <laughs> Which is funny, and it freaks people out. But besides that, it's mostly just painful. One, sounds great for clown school. <laughs> and two, will you get like a cauliflower ear like those boxers used to get? <laughs> if you keep cracking your ears like that? That's what I'd be most worried about. Give him a cauliflower ear. Holy! See, I've had stomach pains my entire life. I mean, like screaming on the ground in pain. Having to get rushed to the hospital to get injections kind of pain. I had no idea that this was part of it. 
The real problems, however, came when I stopped working out as much and I lost muscle. What I didn't know was that these muscles were doing my ligaments job of holding my joints in place. So when those started to fade, stuff kind of just started falling out. <laughs> God, <laughs> I think I had a nightmare like this one time. I've dislocated two toes, two fingers, both of my shoulders, a combined total of 16 times, and now my hip three times. Does it hurt every time? That doesn't sound like something that you would ever like get used to. <laughs> God. So let's get to the time of the story. My hip had been acting up after a trainee physical therapist had pulled it halfway out of his socket. Fire that guy. I got on the bus in crutches and started riding before I was able to sit down, and I got jeeted a meter away and my hip dislocated completely. So I was chained to a wheelchair. I've been up and walking, mostly without crutches, for the better part of six months. Today is a bad day, hence the pain remark at the beginning, but for the most part, I am getting better. I have a great physical therapist, not the trainee one, obviously. <laughs> And I am, when I can, going to the gym and slowly gaining back some muscle and losing some weight. Yeah, OP and I talk about the gym sometimes over in the Discord. Come catch both of us over in Fitness Max in the Red X Discord. I'm not fat or even overweight, but for someone who used to be very athletically, slenderly built, I don't like looking in the mirror at the moment. So that's a quick recap of the last decade. <laughs> Sorry to start things off on a bit of a somber note, but I promise that some very good cringe is following. Oh, I'm gonna hold you to that. No, I know it's gonna happen. It can't not with Lavender Beard involved. <laughs> so when I first ended up in my wheelchair, I was allowed to work from home for a few months. Oh, awesome. I was allowed only to do back office tasks because front office was too painful for me. So when I came back after being gone for about a month, I was surrounded by lavender every fucking day. <laughs> what a trade-off. <laughs> he still wasn't allowed in the back office, but yeah, he didn't really hold to that very much. So on one of the first days back to the office, I got a hand waved and shoved in my face while I was working on my computer, and lavender appeared out of the purple smog <laughs> like a villain from a cheap children's movie. <laughs> How are you, Woodsy? He grunted. What do you think? I snapped back, pointing at my wheelchair. Pain makes me irritable. It makes most people irritable. And I am pretty quick to get annoyed over little things. Some of my more sensitive co-workers have told me that I get snippy when I'm in pain. Like when I fell because my hip gave out and I snapped, I'm fine, at a co-worker who rushed to help me. I didn't mean anything by it, but I have a hard time showing weakness. She was short with me for about two weeks, until another coworker told me that I hurt her feelings by snapping at her and not letting her help me. She only went back to normal after I apologized, so yeah, office drama. Sounds like helpful coworkers bitch made. <laughs> Honestly, just tell people how you're feeling instead of holding a grudge. What's that Confucius say? Holding a grudge is like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Shit makes no sense. <laughs> See, o OP didn't even notice that this person was mad until somebody else came and told him, Ugh, people are exhausting. <laughs> Lavender Beard grinned and said, I'm so happy. I'm no longer the only disabled person at work. <laughs> I turned around and said, Excuse me? What did you just say to me? Yeah, I'm disabled too, so I get exactly how you feel. <laughs> I lost it. Now, no disrespect to people with diabetes. I know that that can be hard. But being in a wheelchair because the pain is so overwhelming that you cannot stand up without literally screaming in pain does not compare to Lavender's fucking insulin pump. I do not have a low pain tolerance. The first time I dislocated my shoulder, I went three days before I went to the hospital. <laughs> but this might be the most pain that I have ever been in. I have painkillers with morphine just to dull that pain a little bit. 
So I told him, how in the fuck do you get how I feel? How does you needing to keep your blood sugar level in check compare to being in so much pain that I can't walk? For the love of fuck, explain! I wasn't screaming, but I wasn't quiet either. <laughs> also, I didn't swear. Those were my more inner additives. You should have sweared. I always swear. It's like sprinkling it with a little MSG. It just makes it taste better. <laughs> Lavender didn't even notice that I was angry and just said, Really? It feels amazing to be able to share this with you. Really, it, it's so hard being diabetic. It might be worse than what you have. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have to constantly check my levels. He took out his fucking indicator and tried to show it to me. Get that thing out of my face and go back to your office. Shouldn't you be working? I have a lot of work to catch up on, so leave me alone. <laughs> it might even be worse than what you have. Like he's prodding you on purpose. He has to be. Are people really this clueless? Only neckbeards, I guess. <laughs> After my rant, he just strolled back to his office, only to return a few minutes later and harass yet another coworker. In those few minutes, however, some of my older coworkers told me that I should be nicer and that he was only trying to help. Ugh. I ignored them and put on my headphones. I'm allowed to wear them at work because I'm severely dyslexic and it helps to have some noise cancellation around me. Mostly, it also helped to keep Lavender away, at least for a good part of the time, and it allows me to listen to Red X while working. Oh hell yeah! That's tasty, that's quality programming if I do say so myself. <laughs> a few days later, I rolled into the break room. Which, if you read the side story, is where they stashed Lavender so he would leave all of us alone. Lavender started janking my coffee cup out of my hands and insisted on making my coffee for me. I didn't protest. Carrying hot liquids while also maneuvering a wheelchair is a dangerous endeavor at the best of times, so I was grateful for the help. I could have done without the commentary, though. <laughs> I hadn't considered that about wheelchairs, but that makes sense. And of course there's commentary. Of course there's strings attached to this uh, generous gesture. <laughs> Lavender says, So, are you still with your boyfriend? OP? Yeah. Why? Lavender. Well, even after you got into that wheelchair, <laughs> that guy is brave. OP? Yeah, he's been really sweet. He's very attentive and helps me out a lot. Lavender. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't go without sex. What? <laughs> I was so confused. Lavender started pouring the coffee into my cup, holding it hostage. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can't have sex, right? I was still confused, but it started to dawn on me. Not that it's any of your business, but why would we not be able to have sex? Lavender sat down, still holding the cup. <laughs> you know, because you're disabled. You can't feel anything down there, right? Or does he like that? <laughs> uh, holy hell. Whack it against my chance as hard as you can, okay? <laughs> I went from confused to downright disgusted. I'm not paralyzed. Also, what the hell, Lavender? You know what? You can keep the coffee. I turned around and started rolling to the door. And then he did something that I think every person who has ever been in a wheelchair dreads the most. He took the handles of my wheelchair and stopped me from moving. This is when you need a button to just electrify the handles or have a spike shoot out of them or something. <laughs> Teach him a good lesson. People often have good intentions when grabbing your wheelchair handles, trying to help you cross the street or help you onto a bus. However, dear readers, do not ever 
Under any circumstance, grab those handles without asking. When you're in a wheelchair, you are in a very vulnerable position. People have just darted away with me to a place that I did not want to go. When this happens, I can still use my brakes, but there's really nothing that you can do when someone stops you from leaving. Let me go now! I yelled at him, startled. He pulled my wheelchair back into the break room. Oh my god. This is horrifying. He put his elbows on the handlebars and looked down at me, from behind me. So, you can have sex? How does that work? Is he on top? Let go of my wheelchair. Now, Lavender! I was talking very loudly, and from the corner of my eye, I saw Susan coming. Oh, God bless the cavalry. <laughs> the moment she saw what was happening, she rushed over. What the hell are you doing, Lavender? Let her go! Lavender reluctantly let go and took a step back. I was just helping her make coffee and, and guiding her back to the office. What a scumbag, dude. Nobody's buying that shit. <laughs> They've all been around you for far too long. All it really takes is a day. I didn't say anything. I was fuming. A little scared and I just felt so helpless and powerless. I just tried not to cry while I rolled myself back to my desk. Susan came after me with my cup of coffee, and we just talked a little about different things. After she was sure that I was fine, she went back to her desk. That woman truly is a saint. Lavender really loved butting into conversations. On a few different occasions, I was complaining to Susan and Miss B about the fact that I had started gaining weight and how little I was allowed to eat. Lavender couldn't stop himself from responding, of course. His reactions ranged from, Why? You look great! Which would have been nice to hear if it didn't come from him. To, Well, well you are filling in all the right parts. Uh, while blatantly staring at my chest. Ugh. He also told me that my ass had filled in great. And now I had a wonderful hourglass figure that complimented my growing tits. <laughs> God, dude. Please tell me no more. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Such a gentleman. <laughs> oh, he's just horrifying. I really wish he'd get his comeuppance, man. Maybe there are some parts yet to be written, and, uh, you know, it all comes down on Lavender Beard's head. But it really doesn't sound that way from what we've got so far. Please surprise me. <laughs> I'm going to leave the story at that for today. Sorry if it had a lot of backstory. I just felt that it was necessary for the overall story. So thank you for reading. I hope it had you cringing in your chair. <laughs> I know I was. Also... Please let me know what books or series or movies I can use for my next intros. I love you guys, and I hope you have a good one. Woodsy, out. TLDR, Lavender loves the fact that I'm wheelchair-bound because, uh, samesies, now we're both disabled. <laughs> Asks me about my sex life and tells me repeatedly that my weight gain accentuates all the right places. <laughs> Ah, oh, just the scum of the earth, man. I can't fully convey the extent of my disgust for this man. I don't understand why he is the way that he is. OP showed me some of his artwork recently in the Discord, and uh, it kind of sucks. But yeah, there's, there's weird abstract drawings and uh, definitely some animal screwing. <laughs> Which I could handle, you know? If you like making artwork, even if it's... Weird and crappy, I, I can stomach that, you know? But when you affect the lives of other people and either don't notice or don't care the effect about the effect that you're having on someone else, ugh. Especially making comments on somebody else's body or just asking questions that are so weird. You want to know about wheelchair sex, Lavender Beard? Come on over here. Let me snap your spine in two so you can find out all about it for yourself, you know? He might not get fired, but I do definitely hope the worst for him. Not necessarily that he gets hit by a bus, but maybe, you know, he falls down some steps. <laughs> He's old, he'll break a hip, he'll end up in a wheelchair. <laughs> and I don't have to go to jail. 
That's what we call a win-win. <laughs> it's such a pretty baby. And it's a newt newt. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> a Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy. Chapter 4. A Not-So-Unexpected Journey. A not-so... So, so I, it's expected? Okay, I think I got that right. Hello, my lovely people. Hi, little Ann Woods. <laughs> I'm sorry for the long wait. I know I've been away for a while, but I am back. And that's the most important thing. <laughs> and back with a vengeance at that. I'm going to keep this short because you guys have come here for the cringe. And I will happily oblige. Blessed. So blessed we are. In this post, we're going to look deeper into why I, on multiple occasions, referred to Lavender as a racist. I know, shocker, that means he is a dick in basically every conceivable way. I mean, I just kind of assumed as much because he's sort of old and stuff, but... <laughs> That's cool, we'll roll with it, you can tell me why. First, let's start with our character list though. Some facts and names have been changed to protect the non-bearded. We've got our OP, Little Ann Woods. Between 25 and 27 when these stories took place, five foot nothing, bright blue eyes, ever-changing hair, and unable to give even one more fuck about this neckbeard's feelings. I was in a wheelchair for the most part in the upcoming events. For others, I was still bedbound, unable to even sit up. At least not without being in an enormous amount of pain. Yes, indeed. I do know a little something something about that. We talked about it in the Discord. Now she is up and at him, thank God. And she's uh, getting back into the gym life, which I've kind of dropped recently. But maybe after New Year's, <laughs> I'll get back at it too. So some of the events I've heard secondhand. But I am very, very sure of their validity. This dude is just that much of a shit whistle. <laughs> shit twizzle? <laughs> Is it like a swizzle stick that's used to sure stir shit, or are we talking about a shit weasel? <laughs> Either way, that's pretty funny. Emir is a lovely dude who has double nationality. He's Turkish and Belgian. A wonderful human being and great to hang out with, as long as it's not Ramadan. <laughs> as a recovering foodaholic... Best not to piss him off during this period. He had a stomach reduction at the age of 18 and really tries to watch his food intake. Oh, that's a good tip too, if you're not hitting the gym especially. Any other time of the year, he was a funny, hardworking dude whom I really loved working with. He works at the Office of Marriage and after Lavender was transferred there, he got a lot of Lavender Beard shit to deal with, often the subject of his racism and utter disrespect. Oh god, this is not gonna go well, but uh, I guess I'd expect nothing else from Lavender Beard. Lavender would purposely eat in front of him during Ramadan, constantly talk about food, and even went out of his way to shake food in front of this dude's face. That's when you slap it out of his hands. <laughs> Fucking clap him on the ear or something like that. God damn, what a jerk. Aya is also double nationality Turkish and Belgian. She's a mother of two. She also works within the Office of Marriage. I didn't know her very well, but she was always very nice to almost Lavender excluded everyone, and she even came to wish me good luck at my new job on my last day, something 90% of my direct colleagues didn't even bother to do. Man, you gotta love that catty office environment. <laughs> Work at a desk, ain't got nothing better to do but have a little bit of fucking drama. Aya had two kids and was slightly balding, which was something that she was really insecure about. You see where this is going, right? Yeah, Lavender Beard makes fun of a balding woman. <laughs> God damn it, dude. He's got no shame at all. Zara, the Office of Marriage's supervisor and an avid supporter of the Lavender Firing Squad. Bless. This is the group of women who wanted to get Lavender fired. I thought it was clever. No? <laughs> I guess. She tried to get him fired on many occasions, but got stonewalled time after time. And then we've got Lavender Beard. The swine. The bitch. The bastard. 
destroyer of all olfactory systems, invader of personal spaces, keeper of the diabetes pump, which we talked about in the first episode of this, and that was fucking horrifying. In every way, this man is the culmination of the worst that humankind has to offer. He is inadequate at doing even the most menial of tasks, incompetent in every way, shape, or form, unable to understand or possibly just appropriately respond to social cues, racist in the I'm not racist but kind of way, sexually inappropriate, see the previous stories or watch Red X's videos for those, yeah, RE diabetes pump again. <laughs> Saying that I despise this cretin would be a huge understatement. Yeah, he's the one and only reason the aliens didn't come to visit. <laughs> they were scoping out Earth and they're like, uh-oh, fuck no. Not that guy. <laughs> My guy sucks. Wanna trade guys for a little while? For all those who are waiting for a huge karmic dick punch for this epitome of depravity, I'm gonna have to disappoint you. He still works there. Nobody has sucker punched him for some reason, and he's still harassing people and still generally hated by everybody. There is, however, a little light at the end of this lavender-scented, garbage-filled tunnel, but for that, you'll have to wait until Chapter 5. Oh, come on, just give it to me. I guess we'll have to do Chapter 5 on another day, but I am waiting with bated breath indeed. So, without further ado, <laughs> the story. Also, I didn't really get many suggestions about other book monologues, so, uh, Lord of the Rings it is. I told OP that she should do the Taken monologue. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> I will never be able to find you. But what I do have is two dollars and a Casio wristwatch. You can have one of them. I still want to see it. Welcome, person of the subreddit. The one who has seen the beard. Will you look into the mirror? For the mirror shows many things. Even the wisest cannot tell. Things that were, things that are, and some things that have not yet come to pass. I know what it is that you saw, for it is also in my mind. It's also what will come to pass if you should fall. The patience is breaking. It has already begun. He will try to take your spirit. You know of whom I speak. One by one, he will destroy them all. You offer it to him freely? I do not deny that his heart has greatly desired this. In place of a dark lord, you would have a beard. Not dark, but lavender. <laughs> and terrible as the dawn. Treacherous is this deed. Stronger than the code of ethics. All shall hate him and despair. <laughs> it's Sauron Beard. <laughs> uh, part one. A non-white beautiful child? Preposterous. Oh, God. Here we go, dude. Hitting it with the fucking <laughs> both barrels right out of the gate. Okay. Let's get ready to be uncomfortable. <laughs> After some redecorating in the government building... The offices of marriage and birth had to share the front office space, courtesy of some much-needed renovations on the second floor. Right around this time, Lavender had somehow been able to, uh, charm his way into a front office function. Leg Bitch, who was the manager, had retired, and while doing so, she had destroyed all of her involvement, or should I say, her lack thereof, in the complaints that had been filed against Lavender Beard. She had done so by destroying Lavender's entire complaint file. Forty plus years of complaints suddenly gone, vanished in a puff of smoke. And I think a lot of the commenters had a good suggestion to always keep a second copy. Keep your own files, because you can't trust people like this. So when our new boss entered the floor, she had no idea of the history that preceded her coming. She decided that we were just bullying Lavender Beard and that he was acting out because he was bored. <laughs> yeah, what about them office jobs? 
So yeah, he was allowed to start working with the citizens. Terrible idea. I'll detail the following horror in the next chapter. Don't worry about that. So this particular story starts when I had a couple at my desk to register their beautiful new baby boy. The mother was white. The father was of African descent. The baby was obviously mixed. I gave them the birth certificate, congratulated them, and they went on their way. They were only just out of the door when Lavender jerked up. <laughs> he jolted towards me and proclaimed loudly, That was such a beautiful child! I was just about to agree with him, because yeah, that was a beautiful baby, and contrary to popular belief, not all babies are. <laughs> I don't tell the parents that, though. And that's when Lavender Beard continued, It's such a pretty baby, and it's a Newt Newt. <laughs> oh no! Newt Newt! <laughs> what the hell, dude? I do have to admit that all babies indeed are not beautiful. I even have to say that about my own son. I thought they'd bring him to me and it would be like this beautiful moment where I held my child and I, I cried. <laughs> but no, I just looked at him, I was like, Ew. <laughs> but he wasn't really done cooking, you know? He didn't want to come out yet. He had like another few weeks left to get some fat on his body and stuff. He was super tiny and super hairy and yeah, I, <laughs> I had a lot of questions. Until I saw his feet. His stupid Fred Flintstone feet that look exactly like mine. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's my son. And now that he's fattened up, yeah, he... he basically looks exactly like me. It's my clone, baby. At this point, my jaw dropped. I was like, Lavender, dude, what the hell? That is so offensive. You can't use that kind of language. I told him, exceedingly pissed off. Ah, Woodsy, would you shut up with that? You can't say anything anymore these days was the response of one of my 50-plus-year-old colleagues. Yep. <laughs> I hate to say that age is a factor, but age does seem to be a factor. Yeah, he didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> Kids these days are way too sensitive. Grow some tougher skin, another one added. This is the same colleague that got offended because I didn't let her help me up when I fell. Oh, it was a her. <laughs> I'm really glad I chose that voice then. So yeah, the generation gap here is uh, pretty big. <laughs> I was basically the only one in the front office that was under 50 years old, and it showed. They berated me for a while on why I was in the wrong for reprimanding Lavender. I told them in no uncertain terms that whether or not they thought something was racist didn't really matter, and just because they're from a different generation, they don't get a racism pass. Maybe that's why they didn't say goodbye to me when I left. Well, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, you don't want well wishes from them types of people, you know. I think the best move was to vacate the building, and OP did exactly that. So good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. Part 2. To bang or not to bang? <laughs> that is the question. And again, we circle back to La Ogra. <laughs> this is a pre-New Boss story. This part I heard after I got back from some different sources, and parts of it from Aya's own mouth. Well, it was Aya's birthday. And as always, they gathered into the lunchroom to celebrate it and eat whatever treat the birthday boy or girl brought. It's tradition. As always on birthdays, Lavender is rather grumpy. Wait, the birthday boy or girl has to bring shit for the rest of the office? You got that all backwards. I am bringing nothing. You want to buy me something? Go ahead. <laughs> but it's my birthday. That don't mean I treat you. And to be clear, I don't care if nobody does nothing for my birthday. Just leave me alone. That's all I want. <laughs> Lavender loudly and repeatedly yells about the fact that he's a diabetic and that he can't eat this or that sweet that the person brought, and that he hates how nobody takes him into account. Whatever, bitch. I brought you some sugar-free cookies. Go sit in the corner and shut your mouth. <laughs> like clockwork, 
He will spend the rest of the day eating the sweets that he's supposedly not allowed to eat, and just keep going until his sugar level is too high, and then, depending on how bad it is, somebody has to bring him home, or he goes home by himself, and then stays home for the rest of the week because he's too sick to function. <laughs> what an idiot! Oh, he just can't restrain himself. The fat man inside is just too much. And Lavender Beard's not fat, but he does have a fat man inside. <laughs> On his own birthday, he always brings apples. <laughs> Telling everyone that he got the entire bag for 50 cents and how cheap the apples are. <laughs> Ain't that some old people shit, though? <laughs> God damn it, dude. Apples, shove them up your ass. <laughs> I don't want anything from you. He'll then proceed to haunt the entire team until we finally eat the fucking apples. <laughs> the moment his eyes are turned, you can see the amazing phenomenon of the disappearing apples. They go into bags or the toilet, out the window, into oversized pockets. <laughs> Nobody wants your discount apples. <laughs> And the bravest of people will sneak over to the trash can and deposit the apples there. The things are basically inedible. Are they really that bad? I mean, I would think that they're just apples, but getting the entire bag for 50 cents leaves uh, a lot of questions. <laughs> but back to the birthday party of today. Aya was happily talking with some co-workers when Lavender snuck up behind her and grabbed her hair. Well, another year, huh? I bet by the time you're 40, I'll have more hair than you. <laughs> he laughed as she ran out of the room, crying on her birthday. Jesus Christ, dude, that's cold-blooded. I mean, it's her party and she could cry if she wants to, but you're not supposed to make her cry at her own party. What the hell? When she left, he told Miss B... A white woman will never have that kind of problem. <laughs> Who would want to fuck a bald chick? <laughs> God damn it, Lavender Beard. Let me show you this picture of Sinead O'Connor. Tell me you wouldn't, though. <laughs> uh, oh, God, dude. And of course he has to bring race into it, because that's kind of the theme of today's episode. Today's, <laughs> today's episode was brought to you by the letter R for racism. Oh, fuck. I don't know what happened after this, but knowing my wonderful former workplace, I'm going to say nothing. Ta-da. It's fucking nothing. <laughs> oh, Lavender Beard would answer his own question by propositioning Aya a few months later. Yeah, who'd want to bang a ball chick? You, apparently. Aya told me this when we were compiling complaints. When Aya was making copies in the copy room, a very tiny room, just big enough for one person to walk through at a time, Lavender came in. Ugh, bad vibes again. Reminds me of the diabetes pump again. He blocked her way out and told her, hey, Why don't you take off those clothes? Eh? And you and I will make some pretty copies together. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. He tapped the machine and said, Hop on. I want to make some copies. And then he stared her up and down. Oh god. Such creep chills. Such douche vibes. Ah. Oh. She said that she literally had to push him to get past him. This too was reported. Lavender got a slap on the wrist and that was it. Oh my god, dude, that is so over the line. Ugh. Even if he's not talking about horrible genetic copies, little tiny beard babies, even the, the paper stuff, like, who wants a fucking Xerox of Lavender Beard's pressed ham? <laughs> that sounds horrible. Oh god. She should have jacked him in the jaw. Something should have happened rather than pushing past him. Kick him in the nuts. It's what he really needs. Oh, buddy. Part three. Us white people have to do everything. <laughs> oh, God, dude. 
What a ride we're on today. I'm breathing so deep. Oh. Pre new boss story again. When the last supervisor from the Department of Marriage changed jobs and Zara took over, there were a lot of mixed responses. Most people were overjoyed. The last supervisor clearly didn't know her goddamn job. She was aggressive and even downright abusive at times. She once shook me so hard that she pulled my arm out of its socket. Jesus, dude, what what is this place? Is this normal for government work? <laughs> is this only in Europe? Jesus, man, that's so heavy. This might be the only incident of me reporting something that was actually followed up on. So yeah, she had to apologize to me. That was it. She caused me severe physical harm and had to apologize. Ugh. The thing that she thought I did so wrong that she had to shake me? Well, turns out I was in the right on that. She just doesn't know the law very well. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> that is so horrible. One employee, however, was very unhappy about abusive McBrainless to leave the position. I'll give you three guesses as to who that was. Uh, Levin to Beard, Levin to Beard, Levin to Beard. <laughs> Zara was afraid that she'd be seen as favoring the other Turkish co workers and kinda went the other way. Repeatedly, I heard Aya and Amir complain about the fact that Zara gave them twice as much work as the others. She believes in her countrymen. <laughs> but yeah, I can see what she's trying to do there. She's just uh, not very good at her job either, apparently. <laughs> How do these people get hired? I bet I could get that job, but I don't want it. <laughs> Lavender didn't seem to see it that way, though. When I was in the back office, he came in and started complaining about... How horrible Zara was, and how she gave everyone so much work. Yeah, because she actually knew what had to be done, unlike the last supervisor. And then he yelled out, The Turks get all the credit, and the Belgians have to do all the work. <laughs> Is that really how you see it, though? Before I had time to contradict that statement, he just ran away. <laughs> using his new line on every innocent ear that didn't even want to fucking hear it. Yeah, that's a quality idiot play. Just drop your idiot argument and run before anybody else can make a retort. <laughs> you got the last word. Now you feel like you're in the right. Great job. So what did I do with this new little tidbit of racist remarks? I did what any annoyed, self-admitted teacher's pet would do, and I told. I didn't go to the higher-ups. No, by then, I had learned my lesson. I rolled my way to the elevator and went straight to the front offices, where, wouldn't you know it, Amir was working and Zara was supervising. I gathered them and told them what Lavender had just told me, and I got two very different responses. <laughs> Amir got angry, like, really angry. This guy has such a calm and sweet disposition, I had never seen him like this. He looked like he was going to murder Lavender and was already halfway out the door when Zara called him back and calmed him down. No, let him go. <laughs> All the while, she just had this sweet smile on her face. This is good news, she said. Everything we had before was sexual harassment without physical contact, but this, this is racism. We can get him with this. This is when she told me her plan to assemble all of the complaints that we had and hand them in all at once in one huge complaint file. This part happened before Leg Bitch left, and we all knew what happened with that file. It was a good idea, but it didn't pan out in the end. If we had a boss that cared, this would have been the nail in his coffin. Unfortunately, we'll just have to wait until he does it again. <laughs> and he will. As depressing as that is, I'm sure that he is up to the task. And if not, then I'm sure just, you know, someone's going to beat him into the ground one day. That's the kind of justice I like the most. Street justice! <laughs> Although him losing his job would be pretty sweet too. So until next time, my dear readers, I hope that you cringed hard. <laughs> it was <laughs> quite uncomfortable, thank you. 
Now I picked out three stories, but I can assure you that these were not the last of his racist remarks. P.S. I didn't proofread this, so sorry for any spelling mistakes or errors or blatant disrespect of the English language and or its vocabulary. Woodsy, out. TLDR, three stories about blatant racism. Whoop whoop. Depravity all around. <laughs> I like how Woodsy apologizes for uh, the blatant disrespect of the English language that most native English speakers don't even bother to apologize for. Nah, you did good. I loved it. <laughs> This story was definitely an uncomfortable one, to say the least, or this series of stories, rather. It's always a, a touchy thing with the R word, you know what I'm saying? YouTube don't like that none too much. I'm probably going to have to get a little bit creative with the titling, <laughs> since I don't just want to plaster racism all over this. Oh, God, it's going to be a, a fine line to walk. But I'm sure that I'm capable of it. Much more capable than Lavender Beard, at the very least. Dude doesn't know a fine line <laughs> if it was wrapped around his neck. And all you really gotta do is give him a little more rope to hang himself. And uh, I hope that's what'll happen in part five. But I guess we'll have to wait and find out. You see, HR had called him into their office and told him exactly who had reported him. <laughs> this is the worst! Should have burned this place down when I had a chance. A Lamentation of Lavender and Villainy. Chapter 5. The Desolation in Smog. Oh, that's a pretty abstract title there. Unless there's something that I'm missing. <laughs> I can't be too sure. Anyways, hello my lovelies. And welcome back to the beard infested nightmare that I call local government. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Today I would like to take you on a tour through these hallowed government halls. Let us look at the behavior that landed our glorious antagonist at the Office of Marriage. Join me as we gander at the marvel that is an incompetent douchebagette that was suddenly allowed to talk to citizens. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> douchebagette. I mean, we probably could have just gone with douchebag there. Baguette kind of implies that it is either small or a woman. But I know for a fact that he's a guy, and he is indeed a giant bag of douche. One of the biggest bags of douche. <laughs> and I offer him no quarter because he's old and he should fucking know better. If you have missed the previous antics, I guess I should say, there is a playlist that you can peruse at your leisure. We've also got links in the description, but YouTube has made it like really weird to get into the description recently. So um, I guess we're going to have to make more use of the cards and the playlists. Anyways, before we start our stories, I would like to clarify and explain some things. First off, my description of Stinkbeard. Oh, Stinkbeard. We had a video about Stinkbeard like way back last Christmas, I think. It was one of the best performing videos on the channel until Sir Sam and Wolfbeard and Adelaide showed up in February and took everything over. But I am still pretty proud of that Stinkbeard video. Check it out. There's a card right there. <laughs> I like the cards. Maybe saying that I liked Stinkbeard was a bit of a stretch. Saying that I did not actively despise him might be a bit more accurate. He was not a nice man, nor was he kind. He was, however, contrary to Leg Bitch, Lavender, and Ancient Beard. Very competent and knew his job inside and out. He also did not judge on gender and treated everybody equally. However, he did scream and yell every time he felt that you did something wrong, even when it turned out that you were perfectly in the right. And of course, he never apologized for that. But as I said before, if you yelled back at him, also at the top of your lungs, he did respect you for it. <laughs> so yeah, stinky bastard, but I respected him. He at least knew his job. Well, that is a very low bar to set, I must say. <laughs> uh, he definitely seems beard-ish, you know, beard light. Why is he stinky? Although I have to give him points because he judges everybody equally. But yeah, why you gotta scream and yell at people? Talk to people like humans. No need for all that. Just trying to make yourself feel like a tough guy. The fuck? <laughs> I'll show you a real tough guy. Here, look, is a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
<laughs> Second of all, concerning gun laws or any other way of defending yourself in my country, everything is illegal. Oh, good God. Welcome to California. <laughs> Pepper spray, taser, guns, even like brass knuckles or something. They are all illegal. Brass knuckles should definitely be illegal. <laughs> you could totally like fracture someone's bone, pop their eye out of their socket. Like brass knuckles are vastly underrated. <laughs> Although I do think that uh, pepper spray taser, you probably let that slide. But then again, I'm not one of the big brains in government. So <laughs> I guess it is what it is. The only thing that keeps me safe at night when I'm being followed home, which has happened on a few occasions. God, I'll say again, it must be so hard to be a woman. I'm sorry that you had to feel this way. But yes, the only thing that kept me safe is the keys that I put in between my fingers. I used to do that when I was a kid and pretend to be Wolverine and shit. <laughs> now I figure out it's an actual defense tactic. That's pretty cool. God forbid a woman would be able to defend herself, right? Ugh. My country might be a first world country, but still, rape victims are chastised. A month ago, three men got away with raping a girl who was still a virgin because the judge stated, There's no proof that that girl didn't want it. <laughs> Fucking neckbeard judge. What the hell? Guilty until proven innocent, I do suppose. Except in this case, it's the victim that's guilty until proven innocent. Ah, oh, that is as backwards as hell, dude. Surely they can contest something like this. That's a horrible ruling. Uh, anyways, I'm sorry for going a bit dark there, but not being allowed to defend myself decently does make me a little pissed, as it should. Anywho, so to the people asking to stab or tase or shoot or pepper spray Lavender Beard, sorry, but an old kick in the nuts is gonna have to do. I think that's what I've been advocating the entire time. <laughs> that's all you need is a good stiff knee right in the nuts. Ah, what the hell's your problem? My friend, my friend. Ah, what? You've been kicked in the nuts. Then lastly, to end the intro on a lighter note, to the people who think Leg Bitch was secretly in love with Lavender Beard and that's why she erased the file, thank God, no. Can you imagine the abomination? <laughs> the repulsive, lavender-scented, dead-inside, Cheshire Cat-smiling offspring that that unholy pairing would produce. Oh, God, no! <laughs> and God said, you're right. <laughs> I'm not gonna make that happen. She erased the evidence simply because he should have been fired a long time ago. And it clearly showed her unwillingness to do anything for her employees. Except for Lavender Beard for some reason. She just simply did not want to deal with it. Anyways, with all that out of the way, here comes the new victims and perpetrators list. Bum bum, law and order. Is that right? America's Most Wanted? Something like that. <laughs> In the left corner, standing at an astounding five feet even, age around 24 to 27 at the time of these stories, somehow always in Lavender Beard's good graces, which is not a good thing, and all out of fucks to give, say hi to... Woodsy! C'est moi. <laughs> And in our right corner, standing at about six foot even, raging lunatic, somewhere between 60 and 63, aging far too slowly and still too far away from dying of old age for anyone's taste, the man we love to hate, the monster under your bed, the patchouli filled goblin. <laughs> Of your nightmares! Give it up for Lavender Beard! And hopefully that's the end of the wrestling intros because I woke my wife up. <laughs> Oopsie doops. So, yeah, after those two, the main two, we got Chris, who was Lavender's first supervisor. 
head of the Department of Deaths. He later asked to be demoted because he couldn't handle the stress of dealing with Lavender Beard. He is a very intelligent man, knows his stuff inside and out, but very bad with confrontation and extremely introverted. I think I had maybe 10 conversations with him over the span of three years. He might be one of my favorite people there. He definitely did not deserve Lavender Beard as an employee. Yeah, I think these beards find people, gravitate towards people who will let them get away with all this shit. Although, he might just be your favorite because you didn't have that many conversations with him. <laughs> Which is a good thing, you know? Better to keep your mouth shut and let people think that you're an idiot than open your mouth and prove them right. Who said that? Comments? <laughs> Who's that a quote from? I can't remember at this point. We also have Rachel, the new boss. Replacing Legbitch and also Lavender Beard's unknowing accomplice, at least for a time. She's a nice lady, but just backed the wrong horse. <laughs> she eventually came to her senses. Oh, goodness. For as beardy as he is, Lavender Beard seems quite adept at uh, getting people to go his way. Anyways, this is Chapter 5, The Desolation in Smog. This one's for you, Red X. And yes... I expect voices. <laughs> God. I'm gonna wake everybody in the house up again. Good lord. This seems to be a uh, Gollum slash Schmeagol monologue, which features uh, Lavender Beard's last bit of decency trying to reason with Lavender Beard himself. So, <laughs> here we go. Wife! Wife looks after us! Women wouldn't hurt us! Lavender. Wife broke her promise! Decency. Don't ask decency! Poor, poor decency! Lavender. Women betrayed us! Wicked, twixy, false! We are the ring of filthy little neck! Kill them! Kill them all! And then... We takes the precious woman, and we be the master. <laughs> Decency. But the supervisors, they know. Eyes always watching. <laughs> Lavender. Then we stabs them out, puts out their eyes, as, make them crawl. Decency. Yes. Yes, yes! Lavender. Abuse them all! Decency. Yes, no! No, it, it's too risky. Too risky. <laughs> Lavender. We could let her do it. It's turning into a beard voice. Decency. Yes, she could do it. Lavender. Yes, precious. She could. And then we takes it once they're sad. Decency. Once they're sad. <laughs> uh, oh, it's been a while since I pulled out the old gall voice, hasn't it? <laughs> a little bit rusty. Hopefully we shook it off somewhere there. Anyways, let us start this story way back at the beginning. Lavender Beard was still part of the Death Squad. It's not as cool as it sounds. Actually, Death Squad doesn't really sound that cool. <laughs> uh, the name itself sounds cool. The connotation is really not. <laughs> they worked at the Office of Death? I really don't have any idea what the English name for this is. So yeah, I'm going with Death Squad. <laughs> uh, Alright, if you're in it, I'm in it. When I entered the fray, there were no more chances left for Purple Nurple Lavender at this squad. He wasn't allowed at the front office or to talk to any citizens in any way. Good, they had him all called out, had his number picked. Instead, his work consisted of digitizing every tombstone in our city and the surrounding areas and overseeing the graveyard placements on the blueprints. Yes, it is as menial and boring as it sounds. Hey, job's a job, you know? Although I would hope that when you're in your 60s, you have a better idea of what you want to do. You live in the dream, not just slaving away in a government office. I mean, I hope that for everybody, but 
Lavender Beard. <laughs> Somehow, Lavender was not able to do this task very well, so he had a backlog of about a year of <laughs> those poor dead people. <laughs> That's what his supervisor, let's call him Chris, called him out on this. And Lavender Beard was, of course, blatantly disrespectful. Because you see, Lavender Beard was a freedom fighter. <laughs> And when he was told to, like, I don't know, stop harassing everyone and concentrate on the work that even a fucking toddler could do right, he got mad. Mad and pervy, those are the two cards he has. <laughs> this was before we moved to the second floor, and Lavender was finally locked away safely. No, he was still inside the back office and right across from the front office. So, on this... Lovely July morning, while I was congratulating a couple on their newest screaming poop bundle of joy, <laughs> I heard a loud screeching all through the halls. Civil servants and citizens alike jumped in their seats and turned their heads towards the door. <laughs> what is that cacophony? A very pissed off Chris entered the room, trying to keep his composure because he was a professional man and didn't want to cause a scene. Lavender Beard should take notes. <laughs> he calmly inquired if Stinky Beard was in today. Oh, Stinky Beard, that's better than Stink Beard. We haven't had a Stinky Beard yet <laughs> until today. Anyways, when my supervisor said yes, Chris politely thanked him and left, leaving us all to wonder what the hell had just happened. <laughs> oh, don't worry, the pieces will fall into place later. We didn't have to wait very long. Lavender came barging in and started talking to me. Hey, Woodsy, <laughs> guess what I just did? OP, I'm talking to this citizen right now, Lavender. Can this wait? I gestured to the people sitting right in front of me, Lavender Beard. Hey, I just told Chris to shove it. <laughs> OP, Lavender, leader, get out. <laughs> really the only way to handle it. Any illusion of professionalism from the local government office was just shattered for those people. <laughs> Lavender ignored me and walked towards another co-worker. It was only when my supervisor got up and literally guided him back to the back office that he finally left us alone. You know, at least until lunch break. <laughs> I stayed in the front office, trying to stay far away from Lavender Beard, but of course... He found me anyways. I'm surprised he could sniff anything out smelling as much of lavender as he does. I guess he's just used to his lavender scent so he could smell OP's scent even through his own musk. <laughs> he says again, Woodsy, guess what I did? I just put a sandwich in my mouth and I was not able to stop his word vomit in time. On the other hand, if I had, I wouldn't have been able to tell you guys about this, now would I? So, what did happen, you ask? Well, Lavender Beard had been extremely rude against a co-worker because she had reported him to Human Resources. I remember this. It was scary, and a big part of why it took me a while to report things about him in the future. You see, HR had called him into their office and told him exactly who had reported him. <laughs> this is the worst! Should have burned this place down when I had a chance. Wow, HR's not good at their job either. <laughs> uh, I love this. This is just like government incompetence on display. They told him to knock it off. And of course, he had taken that as, go harass her some more. So <laughs> he stormed into the back office and started screaming at her. He yelled every profanity at her that he could think of. He had come within an inch of her face telling her that she was a bitch and her autism was why she was all alone, etc, etc. Ugh, why you gotta pull that card, Lavender Beard? I already had negative respect for you, but now it's just even more negative. He loves picking on people's perceived weaknesses. What is your perceived weakness, Lavender Beard? It's not the diabetes pump. He seems proud of that. He likes to show that off and talk about it all the time. How about we just point out the fact that you're old. Much older and closer to death than I am. 
Does that scare you? You better go mark out your own grave plot, Lavender Beard. <laughs> the time is nigh. Ugh. So yes, whether baldness or autism, the dude just attacks whatever he sees fit to attack. Honestly, this whole scenario was frightening to watch, and I'm ashamed to say that I didn't stop him. I was scared. It was my first month on the job, and I didn't stand up for her. I really wish that I had. Nobody stood up for her, but his behavior was reported. Yeah, to HR, who's gonna tell him who reported it. <laughs> and roundy round we go! Honestly, there's not a lot of people that would have risked physical violence by standing up to him. I like to think that I would, but in the moment, shh, I don't know, man. <laughs> what stake do I really have in this? Anyway, so now Chris, his direct supervisor, had handed Lavender Beard his official warning. Damn things be rare. <laughs> and he told him that this was his final warning. He also gave him his yearly review, which was just generally bad all over, as it should be. From his attitude to his inability to perform even the simplest tasks, Lavender Beard. Uh, so I took the pages, I got up close in his face, and then I ripped him in half right in front of his stupid face. <laughs> I didn't say anything, and Chris ran away like a little baby. <laughs> wow, well, you're such a big tough guy, Lavender Beard. <laughs> OP. How are you proud of that? That is horrible, <laughs> Lavender Beard. No, it's not. I'm showing the higher-ups that I'm better than them. They can't touch me anyway. I have tenure. OP, that's not the point. It's disrespectful, Lavender Beard. He was disrespectful to me. Lavender Beard was pissed that I apparently did not think that this was either funny or cool. <laughs> I don't think either of those adjectives have ever been applied to Lavender Beard. <laughs> Creepy, old, weird, <laughs> not funny or cool. He finally stomped off and just went to bother someone else. When I went into the back office 20 minutes later to retrieve some stuff, I heard him telling the exact same story to somebody else. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> you lead such an interesting <laughs> life. <laughs> uh, uh. I later asked Chris about this. Apparently, Lavender had not calmly stood up to smoothly rip the paper in half. No, he had ripped the papers out of Chris's hands, crumpled them up, then opened them again and yeeted it at Chris's head, <laughs> all while screaming at him at the top of his lungs. Chris had removed himself from the situation so as not to punch Lavender in the stupid fucking face. <laughs> Chris isn't one to lie. He's a very straightforward guy, and I'm pretty sure I know which story is more believable. I'm sure the entire situation was filtered through Lavender Beard's ego and uh, repurposed so it made him look even cooler. <laughs> also, if Lavender had quietly ripped the paper in two, then where did all the screeching come from? Hmm? <laughs> yes, indeed. He's not a cool, tough guy. He's a fucking child throwing a tantrum. An old child. <laughs> a child that will probably be dead within the next 20 years. Anyways, after these two things happened, Chris asked to be demoted, and the office got a new head of the death squad. <laughs> Still cracks me up. She was a no-nonsense kind of gal, and really didn't listen to Lavender at all. After about six months, Lavender got kicked off the death squad and was shipped to the office of marriage. Which brings us into our next story. And I'll be taking you a few years further. Lake Bitch has retired and Rachel is now the one in charge. Was she the new head of the death squad? Wow, she moved up through the ranks pretty fast. She probably good at what she does. Although, <laughs> considering how poor everybody else does their jobs around here, I won't put any money on that. In the last story, I hinted to the fact that our dearly beloved, lavender-scented, sugar-fearing douchebagel had <laughs> weaseled his way into the front office and was now allowed to work with the customers. Because smart. <laughs> 
No, Rachel truly believed that we were bullies. All of us. All three departments. We all just hated Lavender Beard for no fucking reason. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she didn't have the paperwork. But honestly, if you've been there for a few years, shouldn't you just be able to look around? <laughs> I guess she isn't the one that was the head of the death squad and, like, got promoted or whatever because, uh, she would definitely be clued in to something like this. <laughs> nah, instead, they just brought her in from nowhere, has no idea about the social dynamic of the office, but yeah, she's fit to be in charge. Sure, why not? <laughs> when a co-worker at the secretariat started to make a file on his mistakes at the front office, she told her to cut it out because she didn't do it for all her other co-workers. No, that's because no one else had 15 fucking pages of mistakes in five months' time. Not 15 mistakes. 15 pages. <laughs> Is that front and back? <laughs> Double-sided? How are you spacing that? I guess it doesn't matter. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so Lavender became part of the team for all of eight months. That's right, people. Flower Boy is back at his solitary desk with some privileges revoked. Thank God. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> so on one occasion, we were sharing the same workspace, and although I sat as far away from him without sitting on the floor as possible, the dude is clearly unable to talk at a normal decibel level. Yeah, I kind of got that problem too, honestly. <laughs> so when he talks... No one else is able to have a decent conversation. And then I heard this gem. Oh, wow. You guys are going to get buried? I thought you were the best man. That's so brave of you. Really, it's so brave. <laughs> God. I looked to my right and saw an obviously very uncomfortable gay couple sitting in front of Lavender. <laughs> Now, gay marriage is not a new thing. It's been legal to marry someone of the same sex for almost 20 years. This ain't new, Lavender Beard. Uh, so who's the bottom? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Please stop. Are you the wife? You look more feminine. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Uh... He just kills me with the inappropriate questions. Holy shit. In the moment, that couple was probably so upset, but looking back, oh, that's worth a hundred laughs. The couple left, obviously. They filed a complaint, but it was only one of many more to come. The worst of all, though, and probably why he lost all of his good boy privileges, was this one. He got a wife-to-be deported. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up. Let me give you just a little bit of info. I'll keep it short and simple, but it is important. In my country, there are a lot of ways to attain nationality. As someone who worked at the Office of Birth and Nationality, I was the one who helped people attain said nationality. Now, the easiest way to get your nationality is to either be married to a Belgian citizen for three years or to recognize a Belgian baby. Of course, as with any law, some people take advantage. We've had women literally get paid to have babies and let them be recognized by non-Belgian citizens to attain this nationality. The children often end up in foster homes because the moms just see them as a way of getting income. God, again, with the depressing <laughs> backstory info. I don't know why we had to mention that. The world is cold and unkind, and I kind of hate all that stuff. But okay, if it applies, it applies. I take it with a grain of salt and try to get to the uh, tasty cringe instead of the sad cringe. The other way is marrying someone. Sometimes both participants are in on it. Most of the time, one of them isn't. <laughs> To stop this from happening, we can have suspicious relationships investigated. Ooh, there is an entire department dedicated to this. You're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> For example, a huge red flag is like they don't know each other's names or don't speak the same language. 
Yeah, they ain't very smooth sometimes. <laughs> That's the world's dumbest criminals for real. Marrying someone with a permanent ID card can also help you get a legal stay, which is very important for illegal immigrants. We can write a report and send it through, and the report we write can either make or break these licenses. Most of us are very careful in what we write, and we also supply evidence, and that's because most of us aren't freaking Lavender Beard. <laughs> he had a couple at his desk. The husband had permanent stay, and the wife was illegal. She had a fugitive case pending, and they both came from a place where war is pretty prominent at the moment. According to Lavender's report, the husband was about 40 years older. They didn't speak the same language, and they were extremely unfriendly to each other. Neither spoke our native language very well, and they had to be helped in English. He flagged this as a scam marriage to gain a permanent visa. Now on the surface, it almost seems like he did the right thing. <laughs> but I know we're going to get some more information that's going to tear that whole shit apart. And I love it. They deported this woman and barred her from the country. Before they did that, they had a follow-up talk with Susan, and Susan's report said this. Both of them were born in the same town. <laughs> in this town, they both grew up together as they were only three years apart. They both spoke perfect Dutch and were very lovey-dovey. <laughs> Her report was read too late and the wife's visa was denied. How did... They come to two such separate... What is even happening, dude? The husband called Susan after she was deported, and she directed him to the complaints desk, urging him to file an official complaint. I don't know if they were able to right this extremely terrible wrong, but I certainly hope so. Jesus Christ, dude! What? And I guess everybody in the office said the exact same thing. <laughs> How did you possibly get that so goddamn wrong? So yeah, this little oopsie <laughs> effectively ended Lavender's short-lived career as a public civil servant. He was banned from the front office and has once again been confined strictly to the back office, with one exception. He has a new office, which he is only allowed to leave to pee. No pooping, only pee. <laughs> if you gotta poop, use the trash can. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> he isn't allowed to talk to citizens on the phone anymore, and he has to digitize old marriage certificates, one at a time. And that is it. He's apparently gotten so sad by the work that he's been home with a burnout slash depression for about three months and counting, so let's just hope that he stays there. That's right, we don't need you around here no more. He couldn't digitize the graves very well. I'm sure he's not doing great with the marriage certificates. What's the difference? He's here, he's not. <laughs> the only difference is less people getting harassed. So yeah, this is where I end my Lavender Saga. Oh. I could write so many more stories about the time he dyed his hair, about the time he asked another colleague who was dating a transgender person how her sex life was like. <laughs> the uncomfortable question ones are my favorite. Maybe about the time that I caught Ancient Beard and Lavender Beard reading porno mags in the lunchroom. <laughs> there are just so many stories. And if you truly wish, I could write them. But I think that this is a good place overall to end the saga. I might also write a two or three parter about a leg beard that worked in the office. I haven't mentioned her at all in this series, but she is a beaut in all her shittiness. <laughs> she and Lavender ignored each other like the plague, and she left after a year because people were bullying her. There's only room enough in this town for one beard. <laughs> she turned everyone against each other and then cried like a literal child when confronted. Yeah, that's a leg beard play, all right. So if there's any interest, I will write it, and if not, I won't. <laughs> ah, we love sagas, and I love your writing style, so please, yes. 
Anywho, I love you guys. If you want, you can always say hi. You can find me in Red X's Discord. Everyone's super nice there. <laughs> Red X is a chill dude, and I am so grateful that he reads my stories. Hey, I got you, fam. Thank you so much again for writing them. Dude's awesome, so definitely check it out. I'm going to bed because tomorrow I start preparing for Halloween. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> yeah, bumping Halloween with a Christmas song. Anyways, Woodsy, out. I am absolutely shocked that Lavender Beard lasted as long as he did. He literally destroyed a couple's life. A couple's happy future together because, I don't know, he didn't understand what was going on or didn't listen or just generally didn't care. Uh, 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 God damn it. If you're not caring about yourself, that's fine. I don't care about you either. But to ruin somebody's chance at happiness and their future, like, what's wrong with you? And I would bet good money that he is not ashamed at all. He doesn't see that he did anything wrong just because that is the kind of person that he is, as we've learned from this saga. God damn, I am grateful to see him taken down. Not exactly an explosive ending, but hell, as long as he is uh, far, far away, <laughs> I consider myself happy with that. I'm glad he's depressed. I'd be depressed too if I was such a piece of shit. <laughs> but really, I get a little bit depressed too sometimes. I don't know why. It's just brain chemicals or something like that. <laughs> but we always come through, find the other side. And making these videos really does help me to do that. It gives me a sense of purpose and to know that people are watching and enjoying my stuff. It just means the world to me, you guys. So I hope that you'll show your appreciation by liking, commenting, and or subscribing. Maybe share the video around if you should like. I would definitely appreciate that. We got all kinds of links and plugs and playlists and podcasts in the description. If you're looking for something a little bit different from the channel, you can probably find it down there. We've also got my social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, yes indeed, and my Patreon with my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I would like to shout them out as I do every video, but I feel the need to specify that uh, it is the $2 Patreon tier that gets a shout out. I've had a few people asking questions. Hey, I'm on your Patreon. Why did you not say my name? That is why. Because $2 is like, you know, a fairly low cost, but also it uh, doubles the Patreon money that's coming in effectively. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> but thank you to everybody, but especially Robert Waits, Baron Von Waggy Pants, Jarhead Jerry, Ooh Ra, River Jerry, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes, I'm Kirby, Twisted Child, Captain Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, <laughs> Cinnamon Susie, Fire Drake, Latin, Livison Loves Jerry, so does Red X, <laughs> Rogue, Silent Revolver, Sergeant Jelly Donut, Sundere Jerry, Baka, <laughs> Aaron W, Althea Blue, Anunnaki, Asia Persuasion Jerry, yeah, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, G Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, watch out for that guy, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Blameless Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, Camille Sarah, Cherish Kitsune, Commander J Tank, <laughs> Delta Rude Jerry, Dennis Dayton, I talked to him in the comments, he is an actual Dayton, so I'm proud to have you among us. <laughs> Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, Itchy Nuts. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about that. Just just give him a good scratch. <laughs> a pimp named J. Crisp. Yes, you have to say the whole thing. J.M. Coon, Jerry with an I. That is a different Jerry. The OG, Jerry. Jerry Blacktail, Jerry T. Herapist, <laughs> John Hero, Jolly Black Jerry. <laughs> He's no longer token Black Jerry. Did we get another Black Jerry? <laughs> Somebody tell me. We also got Simbufa. Jerry! <laughs> yeah. Tell it to the jury. Kira M. Kitsikin. Crew he. <laughs> Lady Jerry Nix. Miss Monday. Little Lone Wolf. Lord Lionel. Jackass Rule. Vanilla Mel. Melgar the Destroyer. Mint Jerry Chip. The freshest of the Jerry's. <laughs> Mirthful Baker. My boy, that one, Nick. Natari. Nightmare Jerry. Oh, no. Organic Jerry. Gotta fold them all. Phantom of the Pines. Jerry Kins and Jerry Beth. Redwin. Satori. Serrated Ash. Staples Jerry. <laughs> Stephanie Goodner. Synaptic Boomstick. Brilliant Tamago. Tapioca Boogaloo. Tato Ferret. Teddy the Police. Ten Ton Monster. The guy with the marble. I think the name is Jerry. <laughs> 
<laughs> What's your first key? Treeberg, Wilmax, you're a wizard, Jerry. <laughs> Yet another different Jerry. A normal Jerry, neighbor of 211 Jerry. Welcome back, Jerry. We also got 211 Jerry. He's in here somewhere, just hiding out for a bit. <laughs> We got the Hunter of Jerry's, Devourer of all things tasty, it is Tom. Admiral A. Tank, Amara AZ, Banish Knight, Barbushka's Irradiated Jam, Cake Jerry, the original different Jerry, California Jerry Girl, hooray, Carrot Jerry, good for your eyes, cha 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 chia, CD, <laughs> Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Corporal Admiral, Lieutenant Private General, Tycarian, Furry Worry, Woo Jerry. <laughs> All right, Crip Titties, <laughs> Cuba Jerry, Smoke Sub with Your Dog, Defawn Jerry, Ghost of Alpha, Goose Says Hong, HMT Mayor, Hydra Jerry, Irish Jerry, Irish Rich Watch. <laughs> There's a lot of Irish people around now. Hide your beer. <laughs> Jerry Mercury, fan favorite, Jerry Aldo Rivera. <laughs> Uh, Jerry Bean, Jerry Roxers, John Indoors, JRPG, Jerry Role Playing Game, aka Bloody Butterfly Gaming. We got King Tom, <laughs> Smasher of Jerry Zillas. <laughs> These are my monkeys. This is my circus. Let's see what you did. King Kong, King Tom. It's pretty close. And we do have Jerry Zilla around here somewhere, I think. <laughs> KJW, Kajow, Crafty Kitty Cat, Life of a Guardian, Little Ann Woods, maybe next time. Hey, also, Little Ann Woods, thanks for the story. This was a great saga. I want to thank you, like, time six today. <laughs> maybe next time, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Naga Viper, Origami Cam, Princess Rosalie, Jerry, congrats on the marriage, Ryga, Raptor Art, Saint's Blessing, Salorian King, Snary, that is Snom Jerry, <laughs> Spoon in the Rug, Steambug Ellie, the Necro Jerry Con, not the original Jerry, the most different Jerry, maybe, Promise, swears he's it's just a fact, and it's totally science, go ahead and look it up, and by it, I mean another Red X video, if you please. <laughs> Thank you guys all so much for supporting on the Patreon. Absolutely blew it up this month with the rise of the Jerry Army. We're going to get some Jerry merch up pretty shortly. Greeny, uh, a.k.a. Mims, a.k.a. the Unfortunate OP is working on a commission for me. So I hope we'll get that up in the Teespring shop sooner rather than later. But overall, I'm just amazed with the Patreon and all that you guys do to enhance my life. I do hope some other people will consider signing up on the Patreon, but if you can't afford it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some old Red X videos? Maybe. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.